Yo, what's up, look less sobbing man, Dirk, Brian. It's going well, it's going well. Master, Tiger, Pooj, Graphics. Action did make day two, yes. Time you said you're going live, yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Brian. Yeah, I actually hit it yesterday on stream. It was it was a lot of fun. After day one of EUIC, I did one set and I hit legend. <laughs> the day one VOD is still clear in copyright. It should hopefully be up by the end of this weekend. But it's taking longer than expected to clear copyright. First doing to deal with big old Shadow D Knight. Nice. Yeah, this day two is gonna be wicked. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day two of the European International Championships for Pokemon Go, the biggest Pokemon Go tournament in history. We are here, and we have the usage stats for day number two. At the top, no surprise, Shadow Gligar. Lantern at number two, Cresselia at number three, Annihilate at number four, Shadow Whisk Cash at 43.8%. Yeah, Mandy, 31.3%. It outperformed. Our prediction was correct. Skarmory also performing extremely well. That's crazy how many flying types are in this top 12. Chargebug, 37.5. Vigoroth, 34.4. Another Vigoroth outperform. That was another top performer we talked about yesterday. Yo, what's up, Guillerme? Mandy, Altaria, Licky at only 21%, and Shadow Lull and Sand Slash at 12.5. This is a top 32. 32 trainers, so 10% of the field qualified for day number two. So we have 16 battlers on the winner side of the bracket, 16 on the loser side of the bracket. Today, we are going to be going through... And we are going to be whittling that down to a top three. A winner does not get crowned today. We get it to a top three. And then there's winner's finals, loser's finals, and grand finals. And that all takes place tomorrow. But we have 32 trainers. And we need to get that down to three. Dude did make day two, yes. First up, we have the homie M.E. Weedle versus Ventuski. Ventuski had a masterful performance in the winner's finals to make it to day at number two. He has Shadow Gligar, Registeel, Vigoroth, Shadow Whiskash, Mandibuzz, and Cresselia. And M.E. Weedle, who is... Yes, only three go to day three. Yes, that's correct. And M.E. Weedle, former Pokemon Go Seniors Division World Champion. He's been a Regionals Champion before. An extremely accomplished competitor. And let's go back here for just a second so we can take a look at his team. He has Altaria, Lantern, Skeledurge, Shadow, Alolan, Sand Slash, Vigoroth, and Cresselia. Well, uh, Day 3 Fict is streamed on the official Pokemon channel, and they do Go, VG, and TCG. So they run the finals for all three games on, on one stream. Right off the bat, as always, Skeledurge energy is very nice here. Like, even against something like Mandibuzz, if you have an energy advantage, you can fight back pretty decently. And as we take a look, pretty standard movesets. Uh, that's a, um, that's supposed to be Drill Run. Uh, that's just a graphical error. Spark on Lantern, Moonblast on Cresselia. Let's take a look at the Ventuski movesets. Very standard across the board. Future Sight on Cresselia, though. Future Sight on Cresselia. Yo, what's up, Stalemate? Hope you're doing well, homie. Oh, game one, tough lead for Weedle, leading the Skeledurge into the Shadow Gligar. Basically, every Gligar in history baits here, and he's baiting as well. Does Weedle call this? Does Weedle call this? 
He does! He does! Every Gligar in history baits there. And Weedle has the confidence to call the bait. What an unbelievable play that immediately puts Ventuski on the back foot in this matchup. A dig cleanly one-shots there. That is a masterful call by M.E. Weedle there. Oh my goodness. Going for another aerial ace. Emmy Weedle going to be committing the shield. And these incinerates are tearing through the Gligar. Going for another disarming voice. Grabbing both shields. Ventuski forced to go down shields in this matchup because of that bait call. We're going to see the save switch into the Vigoroth. Ventuski full sending the dig. This does not knock out. We're going to see the no shield by M.E. Weedle. Ventuski has his own Vigoroth and a Mandibuzz in the back. He chooses to send in the Mandibuzz. As Mandibuzz, even though it will take super effective damage from the rock side, will be able to absorb this damage no problem. So rock slide into the Mandibuzz. Not going to be an issue whatsoever. Ventuski, unfortunately, there is some... Oh, well, that's really not a good start. That's really not a good start there. Ventuski ends up uh, lagging quite a bit there. And it ends up being a CMP tie. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. I have not seen this. This happened at like 3 a.m. this morning. So I have not seen these battles, but that is not an amazing start by any means. All to up a shield, though, probably just wins this. And okay, yeah, this is this is gonna be a rematch. This is gonna be a rematch. Ventuski couldn't get his Dark Pulse either. This is just a rematch, bro. Yeah, all right. Uh, we're just going to fast forward through it. We're just going to fast forward through it. And look, I I believe Weedle, like, they uh immediately take the win off the board and redo it, which is nice. So, all right, that's good. That's good. Obviously, not what you're hoping to see, but the trainers very quickly agreed, like, hey, there was lag, so we're going to redo it, which is good. That is what you want. Judging did it right. So, yeah. That just sucks that a game in which he had such an amazing no-shield call ends up not mattering. Like, he had an amazing bait call there. Edit, and the game... Oh, Mandy into Dirge. This matchup is a bit interesting. We're going to see a switch out into the Vigoroth, baiting out the Cresselia, but this can potentially set up Altaria to do well in this endgame. Vigoroth doesn't have an amazing time here. The zeros are very, very heavily positive for the Cresselia. But if Vigoroth is able to shield a future site, it does get a lot better. Just because Vigoroth needs a lot of slams. Weedle's thinking about it. And he does. He gets the shield call right. And that's a very important call in this matchup. Shielding a future site makes it a bit harder for the Cresselia. Like, Cresselia can still tank multiple body slams here, but it does give Weedle a little bit of breathing room. Let's take a peek in the back. He has Gligar, so unfortunately the Skeledurge has nowhere to run. Going for another future site. This will not knock out, so we are going to see the no shield. Uh, th that's the plan, Peter, yes. It's still clearing copyright. Once it clears copyright, it'll be back public on the channel. I just have to wait for, for it to clear copyright, and then it'll be good. Um, if you want the Mega, do the regular. If you're not going to use the Mega, then do the Shadow. So, Weedle takes Switch. Switch doesn't necessarily help him here, though, which is tough. Switch doesn't necessarily help him here, though, because Ventuski has some very good counters. But here's the thing. Gligar is two Body Slams do a lot of damage. So if Weedle can make a second Body Slam, this would be big. Or he may potentially just pivot here. And he does. He pivots into the Dirge. Preserving the ability for Vigoroth to make a move later. Ventuski learned his lesson. He's not going to bait this time. Weedle with the call to make and gets the shield call right. Gets the shield call right. Ooh, and it ends up being charge attack priority. So Ventuski is going to shield this. Weedle has back-to-back -back moves, but he will not get the second move because the dig is going to be able to pick up the knockout here. So down goes Skeledurge. But there's far Pokemon more deadly in the zeros than... Like, there's, there's not a lot of Pokemon that are more deadly in the zeros than an Altaria, man. Altaria's bulk and the fact that it can hit the Mandy for damage here is quite good. 
Like, it can hit it with a Moon Blast. Ventuski stays into Aerial Ace, but Weedle's still gonna be able to land a Moon Blast, and his Vigoroth can make a move versus the Mandibuzz. Because Mandibuzz and Snarl will do basically no damage. In comes the Mandibuzz. Weedle trying to make it to the Moon Blast there. Dark Pulse fired off by the Mandibuzz, but that's not going to be enough to knock out. Altaria is extremely bulky. Dark Pulse connects. Do we see just two Dragon Breaths and the Moon Blast? We do. That's perfect. Moon Blast will be able to connect. No Protect Shields remaining for Ventuski. And then we are probably... We do see the switch into the Vigoroth. Vigoroth trying to make it to the move. And it's charge attack priority. Oh, that's perfect for Weedle. Ventuski denied an opportunity to farm down. A mistake from Ventuski as he loses all of his energy. And now Altaria can just win this game. Oh man, preserving the Vigoroth comes in clutch for Weedle. Altaria gets the farm down. And Gligar has no ability to make a move. It's much too low. Yo, GG's cap. <laughs> GG's, man. I was so close to sandcastling you. <laughs> That was very well played by Weedle there. Saving the Vigoroth, because he's like, I can't make a move versus the Gligar, but he could make a move versus the Mandibuzz, and it wins him the game. That was amazing recognition there. And the charge attack priority tie, and the fist pump there. He knew the moment he got that move off. And that's why he had to do two in switch, because he had to make sure that, because he knew he was six turns off. Mandy had done five snarls at a Dark Ball, so he was guaranteed six turns off. He was guaranteed to be six turns off. Oh, Skeledurge! The save switch into the Gligar. Gligar will make the dig on charge attack priority here. Oh, sends in the Altaria, banks the energy. I like this so much. Banking 60 energy on the Skeledurge is going to make it really annoying for Ventuski. And he could just use Altaria as a giant meat shield here. I guess if he wants switch, he can shield once. It's really up to personal preference, but he could potentially just look to sack this and then just go for as much energy as possible. Ooh, gets the sky attack on charge attack priority. That's a bit unfortunate. He lets it go. He lets it go. Sends in the Skeledurge. Can two Incinerates KO here? It'd be big if they did, and they do! Skeledurge with 100 energy. What does Ventuski do? In comes the Mandibuzz, but Mandibuzz will be taking super effective damage from the Disarming Voices. We did Mini Coke, welcome in. Grab a beverage, we're gonna be here a while. This Skeletor energy, something we identified at the beginning, is causing Ventuski absolute fits as the Skeletor with this 3-2-2 pacing to Disarming Voice Able to put so much pressure there. In comes the Vigoroth. Ventuski will go for the Dark Pulse to try and put this into Fugisite range for the Cresselia. The No Shield by M.E. Weedle in the back. It is going to be that Cresselia. Cresselia going to look to try and make it to the Future Sight. They'll get the Future Sight when Weedle gets the double body slam, but Ventuski does not go for charge attack priority. This will allow Weedle to connect with two moves. Ventuski is going to look to try and over farm and exit with energy to potentially threaten the Skeledurge. I think it's Mandibuzz through its energy. Mandibuzz through its energy, which means this Skeledurge up shields and now up energy is going to be such a problem for Ventuski and remain a problem. He's baiting with a Grass Knot. Weedle calls it and this does not KO. Grass Knot does not KO here. And it doesn't put him in Psycho Cut Farm Down range either. Ventuski was hoping for a shield, but Weedle's just trusting in the Skeledurge. He's saying, you can't beat Skeledurge with two shields, man. You can't beat it. In comes the Dirge, looking for the snipe, going for the future site. Weedle commits the shield, smelling blood in the water here. If he can get the farm down, he'll have so much energy. The farm down is denied. In comes the Mana Buzz, but the Skeledurge energy... This is just an absolute energy management masterclass in this game number two as Ventuski is getting absolutely torn to shreds by Disarming Voice after Disarming Voice. Ventuski going for the Aerial Ace. 
He should be, I believe, two off the next aerial ace. So Emmy Weedle should be able to do one more and his move. He's not going to risk it. Oh, because he was only one off. Good call. I stand corrected. He's not going to risk it. Disarming Voice is going to pick up the KO. In comes the Cresselia. And the Incinerate KOs. And M.E. Weedle is going to advance in this tournament. Ventuski drops to the loser's bracket. M.E. Weedle moves from top 32 to top 16. Very well played there by Weedle. Energy Management Masterclass on that Skeledurge there, man. Technically, he 3 0 in one of the games. Ventuski lagged, but technically a 3 0. In my book, that's a 3 0. Yo, what's up, Esteban? Yeah. Statistan versus Joppy. Stan with the triple flyer core of Shadow Glygar, Alt, and Skarm. Vigoroth, Cresselia, and Lantern. And Joppy with Cresselia, Skarmory, Lantern, Claude Zire. Which, by the way, Claude Zire, I'm not a massive believer in in open Grey League. But in the, uh, in the Jungle Cup format, in the Jungle Cup format, that thing is a demon. And then he has the Guzzlord and the Annihilate. Alright, let's take a look at movesets. Moonblast on Cress. Outside of that, everything very standard. Fugicide on Cress. Crunch on the Guzz. Night Slash on the Ape. Uh, the Claude Zyre's moveset is a mistake. It'll be Stone Edge. These battles are in London. Look at Stan, man. Utrecht top eight. Liverpool top eight. Stuttgart top eight. EUIC top four. Oh, what a terrible lead for Stan. As he's going to lead Skarmory into the lantern. The Vigoroff save switch. I'm surprised Joppy didn't just immediately send in the Claude. Maybe he's just looking to get some chip damage here. He actually tanks the move and sends in Claude, which is very interesting. Yeah, Claude is extremely, extremely good in Jungle Cup. But in this format, I guess the reason people are running it is they want something to beat Lantern and Vigoroth. But but it's so good in, in Jungle Cup. It is incredible. Goes for the Stone Edge. It gets called. Thinking that Earthquake wouldn't put it into farm down range. But Vigoroth is a little bit giving Joppy fits here. If he wants... Oh, interesting. Not fighting for Switch. Instead, just going to go for energy on the Skarmory. Skarmory can farm all the way down. Brave Bird will be doing... Brave Bird will be getting this Lantern very close to the red health. It'll be getting it very, very close. Goes to the Stone Edge. And it's Alt and Skarm in the back. Yeah, this alignment is absolutely dreadful. Banks the move. Sends in the Lantern. Switch was given up here. The Bird. And the Altaria. Going for the Thunderbolt. He did pivot, yes, because he does. He wanted to save the Stone Edge for where it'll be more useful later on. But now in comes the Skarm. And this is looking extremely, extremely good for Joppy here. Joppy has Skarm on Alt, and he has a he has a Stone Edge on Claude. Yeah, he just goes for farm, man. He just goes for farm. Yeah, this, he knows, isn't a blast, so he can just let it go, stealing all the way down. And then this is just losing for Stan. Skarm's gonna leave with 100. Yup. Stan will call the first here, because he has to. Yeah. But... 
Joppy just has to double up on sky attacks and then he has a stone edge. So this is this is just strictly a one game basically. Cause he has the ability to double up here before Stan can get a move. Yeah, people like the pacing on Night Slash. The pacing on Night Slash is just is just elite. Like the coverage on Ice Punch is really good, but Yep, and then he just combos with the Stone Edge, and the game is done. Oh! He messed up! He messed up! What was that? He waits the turn, lets him get there. Oh, no! No! He was one off! Why would you wait the turn? Oh, the loose con arrives. You, oh, he waited a turn when he didn't have it. He could have just switched instantly and he would have been fine. Oh no. I guess he was trying not to transfer the steel wing, but oh boy, that's brutal. That's brutal, man. Here's the thing though, after a charge attack, it's a zero turn switch. So at right here, he can click this, get zero turn switch, and the steel wing never transfers. It's always zero turn. But he ends up playing to the only lose con in the match. That hurts for Gioppi, man. Yeah, the steel wing won't register because it's after a it, it's after a fast move. Like it's after a charge move. It's a zero turn swap. Yeah. But he unfortunately found the lose con in that match. Stan's thrilled. He knows he he got away with one. He knows he got away with one. And he has a great lead. Skarm. Oh, and Joppy ran ABA weak. Joppy ran ABA weak. Uh, this is our second match of the day. Uh, Weedle won, so Weedle moved to top 16. He pivots a lantern. In comes the Altaria, and this is just strictly winning for Stan. Skarmory is going to make Joppy's life miserable, because he, he didn't get the catch on the Lantern. So he is about to get sautéed with, with some garlic. <laughs> like, switch, switch doesn't matter here. He's shielding, but switch is completely irrelevant in this game. The more shields you use, the fewer shields you're gonna have to brave to shield brave birds later. And he plays to a CMP tie that he does not win. Oh no! He's barely able to hang on. That hurts for Gioppi. In comes Vigo, and yeah, we're done here. The moment Claude comes in, I mean, you can just bring in Skarm and just start launching Brave Birds at everything in sight. I'm a bit surprised we're not insta-switching. Giving Claude energy is dangerous here. I'm very surprised we're not insta-switching. This might give a sliver of an opening here to Joppy by Stan not insta-switching. Like, he gets damage, but... Uh, people don't want to lose to Vigoroth, so that's why they have Claude's. He's gonna full send the Quake. Stan lets it go, so Stan Stan's just fully sacking Vigo here. Oh, that's alignment! Oh, no! That's alignment! He protects against the Sky Attack, but he's getting Brave Birded now. Them's the rules. So, if you're Stan, uh, you could do two and a move here. <clears throat> two, two and a bird. Oh, that timing is perfect! Because the dragon tail sneaks, but it doesn't register. It doesn't register. And so he gets a steel wing and takes no damage for it. That's such a high level play. Oh, that's perfect. That two in the move there is exactly right by Stan. 
Yo, MEGP, uh, MEJP, uh, if I had a Zapdos, I would try it, but I have been dealing with it in a different way. I have my, uh, Heracross Palisand Core, and it's been cooking them. Palisand is actually a Giga Chad. Lurgan. Dugong, Shadow Gligar, Night Slash, Annihilate, Bligaton, Moonblast, Cresselia, and Lantern. And this was honestly, Mr. McAlvin here was a star on, on day number one. Heracross, uh, it's kind of copium, but at least it's a, it's a fighter that has flying coverage. Cresselia, Moonblast, Vigoroth, Charcha, Shadow Gligar, Mandibuzz, Shadow Cash. Mr. McAlvin was probably had had the best technical play and win con awareness of anyone on day one. Crescent to Glive, very neutral. When you're playing your set so I can avoid getting cast uh, casted later. Well, uh, if you... Okay, really? Really? Okay. Really, bro? Get the Wi-Fi together, man. Get the Wi-Fi together. Yo, that's awesome, OG Loco. Good stuff, dude. Get the Wi-Fi together, venue. Come on, man. All right, uh, do-over of, of game number one. G Zap, yeah. If you see a G Zap those into a Claude, you'd be really sad. Claude is a Giga Chad. Claude is the third on that team. Switch matters quite a bit here, yeah. So, they have the headphones to block out crowd sound krillas, so that way someone in the crowd can't yell and be like, Yo, Lurgan has a dugong in the back! So, they are a noise-canceling headphones. So, that is why they have them. So that way people in the crowd can't, like, shout stuff and, and, and give them info that they wouldn't be able to have. Yeah. I have full faith that if anyone knows how to win a Cressmere, it's Lurgan. This match told you how to, how to play the Cressmere. So, hold on. I'm going to rewind this because I want to see how, how Lurgan played it. Because Lurgan is basically the best Cress player in the world. Okay, I'm gonna go back. Ch okay, chat. We we are gonna learn from Lurgan how to play the Crest Mirror in the Open Grey League. Lurgan is basically the best Cresselia player in the world, and I don't think there can be ma an, an argument made otherwise. Let's see what he does, because there's gonna be a correct combination of Moonblast and Grass Knots to win it, and it's clear that Lurgan knew it and Mr. McCalvin didn't, because Lurgan wins lead here. So Lurgan is going to go for a Moonblast first. So this is a very instructional moment. This is a very instructional moment. If you ever play Cress, write this shit down. So he Moonblasts first. And now he Grass Knots. Interesting. Is it Moonblast triple Grass Knot? Is that the sauce? Is that the sauce here? It looks like it is the sauce. But Mr. McCalvin is going straight Moonblast. That is insanely good information to have. So yeah, if you're in the Crest Mirror, it's Moon for Grey League. It's Moonblast into Triple Grass Knot. For Ultra, it'll be different because they're a lot bulkier. But for the Open Grey League, it looks like Moonblast into Triple Grass Knot is the way to go. And Lurgan knows it and Mr. McCalvin doesn't. Yeah, and, and then by going Moonblast first, you can guarantee you land it, which is really nice. Uh, later told he wasn't aware team switching was possible for rematching. Crest threw him off and he never got it back together. Oh, that's unfortunate. But yeah, for, uh, the, uh, Pokemon Championship Series, yeah, rematches, people can change teams. Yo, what's up, Neon? Welcome in, homie. Hope you're doing well. We are so back. 
Vig and a Gligar is genuinely uncomfortable as the Gligar. Like, Vig wins the zeros, and if it's up energy, they just make your life hell. Realistically, even with Mr. McCalvin having an advantage here, the advantage is lost the moment he switches out into the Mandibuzz. And Lurgan's just gonna shield. He has to try and put it into double ace range. Sorry, put it into single ace range, but he can double up. Oh, gets the catch! But now it's Dugong on Mandy. Is he gonna rebank? But yeah, Crescent to Gligar. I typically prefer to be the Gligar on that matchup, which is crazy as it sounds, because it feels like it should be a good lead for Crest, but I definitely prefer to be the Gligar in that matchup. Probably because I have a really, really high rank Shadow Gligar, but I really like being the Gligar in that matchup. I have a, a pretty solid Crest. I would always trade, try and trade for a better one, but I have a, a pretty solid Crest. Yo, what's up, Strawberries? Welcome in, Trainer. Oh, does he get it? Oh, the Mandibuzz! Everyone having them high rank Mandibuzz now. The matchups are different, bro. The matchups are different, because you can have, like, eight more HP as a Mandibuzz. And he's just going for damage here with the Drill Run. Yo, what's up, Torst? And he can combo with the dig that he banked. To burn clock, yeah, that makes sense. Like, realistically, that damage doesn't matter in the in the grand scheme of things, basically. Alright, are we locked in? Ooh, good lead for Mr. McCalvin. The Cresselia safe switch. In comes charge a bug And this is very playable for Lurgan because he's gonna have Gligar into Crest endgame. Rank two Mandy? Nice! Yeah, high rank Mandy's a Giga Chad, dude. High rank Mandy's a Giga Chad. Like, especially because Lurgan has an absurdly high rank Cresselia. He had a really high rank Crest and then he traded for two better ones. So he has an absurdly, absurdly high stat product Crest, bro. His crest should live this X scissor. Yep, watch this chat. Watch this. High rank crest difference. Survives, gets the moon blast. Does this knock out? He lets it go. If this knocks out, crest is a god. Oh! Ho, ho! One HP! No shot! Wow! The tiniest of margins! Holy! I'm very surprised Mr. McCalvin committed to a slam there instead of like building up and going for a rock slide. Now he's gonna pull some the rock slide. Just lets it go. He's gonna try and win this game with Gligar. Oh, he barely hangs on! Simul switch, zero turn for both. Shadow Gligar into Cresselia in the end game here. He's going for the grass knot as soon as he gets it. Immediate no shield by Lurgan. Yo, what's up, AP? Grass Knot is going to connect. Mr. McKelvin wants to cycle cut it into a range where a second Grass Knot would be lethal. Lurgan massively over farming, and he's going for a bait here. Tough call to make if you're Mr. McKelvin. And he shields the bait! Lurgan getting the bait call right. Is this going to be enough to help him fight back in this game? Lurgan will still have a 1 HP catch available for him with that Dugong, but Switch Clock is a ways from being up. There's still about 20 seconds left on the Switch Clock here. Lurgan continuing to farm. Lurgan again building up just shy of that 100 energy, full standing the dig, and this time, Mr. McCalvin gets the shield call correct. Dig 
does get shielded. Another Grass Knot and another shield by Lurgan. Lurgan will need to manage his energy very carefully. This is not a range where a dig will be able to knock out the Cresselia. He is going to do more wing attacks, though. He's trying to get it into that range. And now he's going for this dig. This dig will not be enough to knock out the Cresselia. Cresselia will be able to withstand this damage. The dig is going to connect. Cresselia! Oh, the catch! Onto the 1 HP Dugong! Oh, what an unbelievable catch by Lurgan! Oh, my! And now he can just overfarm to his heart's content. In comes the Vigoroth. You can just... Oh, he goes for a dig. I mean, that's completely unnecessary. A... a, a Aerial Ace will KO. But Lurgan goes for the dig. Stares down Mr. McCalvin. A little bit of bad manners there by Lurgan. And he's gonna take it with the Aerial Ace. Oh, my. The absolute crushing catch. The bad manners and the stare by Lurgan. And that's got to be demoralizing for Mr. McCalvin there as Lurgan takes it. Unbelievable by Lurgan. Wow. <laughs> he uh, had to throw there, but he could have waited a turn. He uh, could have waited a turn. Like, you can wait a turn to see if the Psycho Cut goes through. But he didn't wait a turn, and that cost him. Ooh, Onion versus Stone Collection is going to be a good matchup. Look at this. Both absurdly decorated competitors. Top fours and top eights everywhere. For Onion and Stone. Onion with the Shadow Polyrath team. Stone Collection with his signature Shadow Sableye. That stage looks beautiful. And Onion's on Powder Snow, which is interesting. They're locked in here. Tough lead for Onion. Shadow Gligar into the Azumarill. Two better responses in the back, but no switch out here from Onion. He's going to switch out into the Cresselia. Cresselia answered with the Shadow Sableye. And here's the awkward thing if you're the... The very awkward thing if you are the Cresselia player. As long as Stone double shields, Stone will take no damage on this Sableye. There's no fast attack pressure here. Look at these Psycho Cuts. There's been over 10 Psycho Cuts and the Sableye is full HP here. Sableye is full HP here. So this is a problem. Like, you can bait it out, but as long as Stone has shields, you're never doing any damage to it. And now he has to deal with the full health Sableye. This game is really in an awkward spot now, where he has energy on the Gligar. He'll have to throw it into the Sableye. Sableye gets the shield right back, and you're still in that really uncomfortable position where it's Azu into the Gligar. Full sending the dig. He is still mate, yes. Stone shielding the Sableye. He wants shields down. He wants shields down. Shields down is actually worse for Charger Bug into Lantern. Charger Bug wants shields up. He pivots into the Azu. Saving the Sableye and catching the dig. This does mean... CMP Sack Switch! No way! Oh my god, I need to rewind that! Oh my god! What a play! What an unbelievable play! I didn't realize he clicked the move! <laughs> and just like that, he completely neutralizes the rest of that Gligar. Onion tries to switch. He can't! What an unbelievable play there by Stone. Oh my goodness. Absolute filth. And that is an instantly game-winning play by Stone. Yeah, that swap was absurd. That swap was absurd. <laughs> nah, that's crazy. That's crazy.
And you've already done enough damage to it. Yeah. Onion knows it's over at this point. Whether he threw a move at the Azu, whether he didn't, he didn't have a win con. Stone doesn't want to show third, but he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to. Unless... Oh, he doesn't show third. Oh man, I thought two sparks would KO, but it took three. Stone gets the win without revealing the third. That CMP sack swap was unreal. What an amazing play. What an unbelievable play. Ooh, all right, game number two. Polly into the Vigoroth, the save switch into the Shadow Sableye. Shadow Sableye just so safe as a counter switch into Onion's team. Stone going for the foul play. His entire charge moveset is resisted here. The foul play gets shielded up by Onion. And we're going to see the Icy Wind fired into the Shadow Sableye. Stone shielding back. He could pretty safely go Lantern here, but he goes Altaria, and that's going to set up Charger Bug into Lantern in the endgame. This is debuffed. Onion's going to let it go. Can Stone make a second? I think the Dragon Breaths will knock him out before Stone gets a second here. Oh, new mechanic! Damage registration error, whatever you like to call it, it goes off, and Stone Collection gets the 1 HP move. The Dragon Breath KO'd, but the charge attack had priority. It gets to go first, and just like that, Onions lost almost his entire Altaria. In comes the Vigoroth. He's going for the Sky Attack. But that is a brutal turn of events for Onion Frank. He went for the Sky Attack. He's hoping to get to another here. But Vigoroth gets the farm down. And that's just a one game for Stone. That's just a one game. Oh, that's brutal. Sableye is single weak to fairy, yes. Yeah, this is very comfortable for Stone. I know you didn't use specifics with your name, but this is an attempt to be a uh, spoiler-free watch party, so. Volt Switch is legacy on Charger Bug, yes. Yeah, it is legacy. Ooh, there's a Snorlax at my house. Let's go. But yeah, he knows it's over. All right, 2-0 win for Stone. Next up, Obadomac versus Sendodu. Sendodu rocking the Guzzlord. Obadomac rocking the Shadow Cash, Shadow Gligar pairing. Oh, that's awesome, Alec. Yo, it's so chillest. Thanks, homie. Uh, Rise, unfortunately, didn't make day two, Trainer Kai. He got to, I think it was winner's finals, but then ended up... Well, he was shown on stream at some point, but unfortunately, he uh, lost on stream and then wasn't able to make it to day two. Yeah, it's, it's a Moonblast Cresselia. Another Moonblast Cresselia. Crunch on the guz. Pretty standard. Outside of that. Ooh, guz into Gligar. Uh, Galistapod, it is quite good, especially in, in, like, ultra formats. Yeah, he, uh, did pretty solidly, but unfortunately, couldn't quite make top 32. It's the most stacked tournament that there has ever been. So, it was, a it, it was an absolute gauntlet. The dig lands, 
sends in the Scarberry safe switch. Whoa, no. Why are we safe switching Scarberry? That's so risky, bro. Why would you do that? Oh, man. We are going to have to revoke some Skarmory privileges. This is not the first time. Like, I guess making the read that there's no Lantern, but even if there's a Wrath back there, you just get cooked. You just get cooked. If it's sending Gligar, yeah, this is just an instantly lost game. But yeah. Like, there are... Two of the five things that could be back there completely destroy Skarmory. So you're just saying that of the two things that are back there, neither one are the two things that can shit on Skarm. So you're just praying that he's triple weak to Skarm. He was ABA to Skarm, but he wasn't triple weak to it. And now, yeah, this is just an instantly lost game. Um, it's really personal preference on Crunch vs. Brutal Swing. If I'm not mistaken, I believe... Hold on. Let me pull up the exact info there. Charge attacks. So, Brutal Swing is cheaper and has better damage per energy, but Crunch is more expensive and has a debuff chance. Well, yeah, Exeggutor, but that's but that's very different. That uh, isn't show six. I uh save switched. I have save switched some some weird stuff because I just remembered people's teams. But in show six, when you know they have a lantern and a wrath, you kind of can't save switch Skarm. Definitely, yeah, Star Party, yeah. I, like, the actual in-game is usually what I do, but but if people just want to book ju just to talk through team comps, specifically with regards to show six and stuff like that. But yeah, so Brutal Swing, it's, it's slightly cheaper. Like, there can be... My recollection is that... Because Dragon Tail should be a nine, right? Yeah, so there is a four cycle for Brutal Swing, whereas Crunch is always straight five, so the pacing is slightly better. Okay, good lead for Sandodu, but if a dig lands, Gligar can flip this. This is the uh, interplay between the Gligar and Licky matchup is very interesting. If you shield the dig as the Licky, you can guarantee switch advantage. But if you let the dig go, now Obadomac can play for swap. Because the, the goal as Obadomac is basically just to... I'm going to wing attack this into Aerial Ace range. Because with Aerial Ace, you can outpace. Goes for a dig because it isn't quite Ace range yet. Sendodu is just going to let this go. Ooh, yeah, he can get some nice farm here. And Gly's energy, because Obadomac didn't bring the Skarm. If Obadomac had a Skarm in the bag, this would be really nice, but he doesn't. Sandodu's got a no shield in case, but I mean, if it's a Skarm, he just loses. He ran so, 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 so weak to Skarm. Because he's like, he saved switch Skarm. He's not going to bring it again. Because it literally lost him the game last time. So he just runs the equivalent of triple weak to Skarm. Shadow Zone? I mean, in my, uh, in my show six video versus Axon, I ran a Magnezone team. So I am a big fan. I'm a big fan. I was very early on the Shadow Zone hype train. I was very early on the Shadow Zone hype train. That thing is a Giga Chad. 
it it requires very careful usage like you have to be very precise and good with it but i love shadow zone man it's amazing he's saying nah you can't farm me oh open domac didn't commit he could have committed i think he could have farmed down but now because he threw he gets this aerial ace Ah, a misplay by Obadomac. Ah, uh, never mind. He actually lives that. I stand corrected. Not a misplay. I was so sure that Psycho Cup was going to KO, so I stand corrected. But I mean, his crest is a level of healthy that is a massive fucking problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a massive problem. Gets a catch, but realistically, he opens it. Yeah, behind me, it's a uh, Yabelto figurine that uh, someone sent me. But yeah, Sendodu is going to take this. 2-0 to zero over Obadomac. And we're still on the winner's side of the bracket because we start off with 8 on the winner's side of the bracket. All right, Pablo Dina's first Icelandic Lapras. Icelandic Lapras is uh, one of the homies. So let's go, Icelandic Lapras. He has the Mandibuzz and Iolabe team. Pablo, double normal with Vigoroth and Lickitung. For Jungle Cup, I have been running a well the team that i hit legend with was in the open great league it's eligible for jungle cup but i think it's better in the open great league um my jungle cup team involves a heracross a palisand and a claude Zire. and i faced three regional champions in one set and i beat two of them so i'll take it i'll take it i feel like that's about as good as as good of a stress test as a team can get it was three regional champions in one set and they kept having Altarias. Pablo was the guy who got 6 by an Attaquin, so he's gonna be looking for some redemption. Ooh, I believe Icelandic Lapras is on Ice Punch. He is, which means this matchup is way better. The Claude moveset, um... Mudshot, Stone Edge, Earthquake. Claude is a Giga Chad in this meta. Claude is actually so disgustingly good in Jungle Cup. And this is from someone who thinks Claude is some trash. I think Claude is some absolute ass in OGL, but it is like low key the king in Jungle Cup. <laughs> Can Alt? I thought Ape could make three Ice Sponges. Is that only with an energy lead? I imagine someone like Mini Coke in chat would probably have an idea. This is not Future Sight range. Banging all that energy. For some reason though, I had a thought Ape could make three Ice Punches. Is that only with an Altaria counter switch with you having an energy lead? Or maybe there's some kind of uh one counter lead, yes. Okay. But 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 it depends on each step. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Shadow D Knight, Skelly, Safe Switch, Shadow Zard closer for Ultra. Um First thought is that it would be a team effort to get through an Ampharos. Like a Shadow Ampharos would be annoying. Like you could beat it, but it would definitely be a team effort. Yep, just get the Volt Switch there.
Oh, he's not gonna get there! Oh! Oh, no! He can make an Ice Punch versus Charge-A later. He can make an Ice Punch later versus Charge-A. So he has to get the Charge into Ice Punch range, but the Charge is so healthy, bro. Jungle Cup? Uh, Vigoroth plus anything is a good team, to be honest. Like, Vigoroth, Palisan Core, Giga Chad. Also, Vigoroth, Altaria Knowledge. Important stuff. I mentioned it in today's video. If you're a Vigoroth, you win the twos straight body slam versus Altaria. You win the twos straight body slam. I don't- a slam is not gonna put this into ice punch range. This should just be a loss, I believe. He only threw two licks there, but... Yeah, this is not ice punch range. Yeah. It'll still survive this with like 10% HP. Maybe even 15. Ice Punch is not a good move. Yeah. They do it good against the Big Ross. Nice. Yeah, I am trying to build teams that don't have Vigoroth on them. Steelix? I do think Steelix, if you're running Psychic Fangs on it, I think it's very good. Because Steelix walls Vigoroth's energy, and with Psychic Fangs, it puts up a hell of a fight against Clodsire. So I think Steelix is, is very good. Like, as someone who's run Claude, it's been annoying to deal with. Because it is playing to a lot of things. Oh, he saves with his charge bug, and he has no response to it. Oh, that's tough. As a professional slanderer of Vigoroth, I'm not running Vigoroth in this cup. I ran Vigoroth and open like a Giga Chad. Heracross is very interesting. Like, Rock Blast hits very hard into a lot of things, which is really nice. Very good mechanics by Lapras. Pablo can shield for swap, and he's gonna do that. Uh, I would not run Steelix if I could only run one move, to be honest. Like, Fangs is a must in this meta, but if I only could run one move, I just wouldn't run it. I'd run a different Pokemon. Fangs a move, goes Licky. Mandy, hold up. Pablo, by switching out here, took himself a little bit out of the driver's seat of this match. Ooh, there's an Annihilate here. Sorry, uh, a Mankey here. Uh, a future Annihilate. Yeah, Strawberry, a lot of why I wanted to get good at this game is so I'd be a lot less limited in what I could and could not run. Yo, 1-13-11, but I think it's too big for Grey League. It's probably gonna be an Ultra League boy, isn't it? 2470 in Ultra? Ew! That's getting transferred immediately. That's disgusting. 2470 is nasty work. That's nasty work. Yeah. That is absolutely nasty work. <laughs> Sauce, you're molding. Oh, rip. That's pain. Like, if it's in 2480s, uh, Axon's on the loser side of the bracket. They're playing through all of winners, and then they'll play through losers. So Axon is still in it. He goes up against Caleb round one. Team comp-wise, it's going to be a really tough matchup. Axon has a really big team comp disadvantage in that matchup. Because we have all of the teams, th thanks to the Giga Chad who runs Dracovez. I've run some pretty rough ranks on stuff like my vig is a rank 497 my cash my well my cash is a 148 but 
Like, on my Legend team, my Tropius was a rank 361, and my Vigoroth was a rank 497. I was a commentator for Charlotte and for Portland, Star Party. Uh, this is the winner side. It shows right up in the middle. So this is the winner side of the bracket. Yo, what's up, RTG? Yeah, Icelandic, got it. But I, I don't think a Dark Pulse KO is here, even if he can get there. Ah, it registered. It registered. Who do you want to win at all? Uh, one of the Discord homies, either Icelandic Labyrinth, Emmy Weedle, or David. Because in the top 32, we have three members of my Discord competing. Icelandic Labyrinth is one. Unfortunately, he uh, just lost to Pablo, but his day is not done. He will be able to play on in the loser's bracket. I have a new Cresselia. My old Cresselia was an 8, 9, 10. My new Cresselia is a 2, 10, 13. But for Cresselia at a high level, you want it to be very high defense. There is a very useful Lantern bulk point. So I'm going to keep trading for Cresselia's. Ooh, we got Dune versus Dinoski. One of the two Shadow for Alligators in Top Cut versus Dune Bug. One of the five Americans in Top Cut. This will be an interesting matchup. He has Lantern and Licky, which are two very good Gator checks. And Gligar up a wing attack can win it. Yo, what's up, Ruffian? Had to, had, I finally discovered that you had a Discord server, so I was able to hop in there. Yeah, the level 20 raid Cresselias can get low enough, yes. It's preferred to trade it with, like, low friendship. So if you're ever out on a community day and you just meet random people, you can be like, yo, do you want to do a trade? Uh, do you want to swap Cresselio? Ooh, Licky into the Shadow Gator. Good lead for Dune here. He is the Ice Beam one. It's Scafo, who has the other Gator, who's on the... Ooh, save switch, Guzzlord. In comes Annihilate. But here's the thing. Annihilate's energy is walled. This is an interesting play by Dinoski. Annihilate's energy is completely walled here. Proof of your legend status? He doesn't believe it? Alright. I'm gonna flex my... I'm not, I'm not going to say what people have been calling the pose because I don't like to go into political stuff on stream, but it's objectively really funny. Uh. Dinoski can get more gator energy here, but instead just going to go for Crest. Oh, but that lets him get a Night Slash. Yeah, and that damage is really important. That makes it so comfortable for Gligar. That makes it so comfortable for Gligar. Ooh, combo with the gator. Trying to desync the clocks. It's a uh, 20k, Tiger. But if it's on a community day, then oftentimes they have reduced dust costs for trades. Like, a lot of the calm days during the hours have, like, half-cost trades, so it'll only be, like, 10k. But, yeah. So, it's a little expensive, but especially if you get it during the calm days, then it's a lot. It's nothing derogatory. It just references a, a political figure, and that's not something that I want to bring up on stream because I like my streams to focus on Pokemon. Like, that's the thing, it's like, it doesn't even mention anyone in a, in like, a negative way, it's just, that's not something I want brought up on my stream, so. And this is slam range here. Ooh, the pivot out! He saves the gator. Dinoski dancing here. Dinoski really trying to dance. Really trying to dance. Dune's stuck here, by the way. Dune gets another slam, though. He can't get the farm down. In comes the Gligar. But here's the thing. Gligar can go for a wing attack down and leave with a move. 
Nice, Yvelto. That's awesome. Uh, we just needed to get Fly at some point. He needs to have a move here, and he's short. And that's a game one win for Dune, but Dinoski did what he could to dance there, but Dune was really... did a nice job of, of not letting him dance his way to a victory. Hey, Alec, uh, uh, that's just a new project. Honestly, having a, a like high rank and then a higher attack one can be sometimes useful. My Liga Tongue is pretty bad. It's a rank 100. It's not that great. It's an 11, 15, 12. So, like, I, I use it, and 99% of the time it's fine. But in the future, I would consider rebuilding mine. But my main priority is Cresselia. Because Cresselia is a lot better in this meta than the Liga Tongue is. Ooh, Dirge into Licky. Licky's energy is useless here. Let's take a peek in the back. Krez good in the back for Dinoski. Dune is incredibly wicked at this game. So they're going to be doing all of the winner's side up until we get to winner's finals. And then they're going to be playing the loser's side of the bracket. The loser's side of the bracket, we're told just to not show up for a bunch of hours. Because they're just going to be doing all of winners. Because we've never had a Pokemon Go tournament of this size. So they're still feeling out exactly how they want to play it. Safe switch Cresselia. Uh, very nice at times, I do. This just sets up Ape into, Ape into Guz in the end game. Uh, Dune, Dune didn't lose the series yesterday, no. He, uh, he, uh, won out everything, so he, he finished first in his group. So that's why he's on the winner's side of the bracket. Worlds 2024, uh, they, they should be announcing the dates tomorrow, I believe. But yeah, so Dune, Dune made it through day one unbeaten. So that's why he's on winner's side. Because everyone who's playing here hasn't lost a series yet. CMP. Oh, nice. He's not hitting any bubbles because he doesn't have to. It still knocks out. In comes the guys. But bad news, trainer. Bad news, trainer. It's the ape. Oh, yeah. <laughs> rip. Rip Dinoski. All right. Uh, Gator moves to the loser side of the bracket. Seeking this nice slash here. Yep. Bro, that's not a catch. Please. <laughs> Disarming gets shielded. He's looking to switch out. Oh, he does one, then switches to defer the incinerate. Does he get the snipe? No, he doesn't. He's forced to slam. He's forced to slam. So he gets one counter. He he defers the incinerate. Uh, Claude Zyre is very good. Vigoroth's very good. Oh, trying for this farm down. Can he get it? No! The one HP Lickitung, and that's the difference between Dragon Tail and Dragon Breath. Surviving on one HP there. He leaves with the double brutal swings. But the move loaded on the Annihilate. Wins charge attack priority. And Dinoski just shaking his head. As Dune with the 2-0. to zero Gets USA into the top 16. Next up, Scoffle versus Zizwilus. Zizwilus running the Talonflame plus Shadow Obama Snow. And Scoffle with the Shadow for Alligator plus Wigglytuff. He's Weather Ball Ice. There's no reason to run Icy Wind on a Shadow of Bomba Snow. So Weather Ball Ice for pacing Crunch on the Guzzlord, Night Slash Annihilate, Flame Charge Fly. And he has pretty standard, but Crunch on the Shadow for Alligator. Ooh, tough lead. Lantern and a Gator. He save switches the Wigglytuff. Oh boy. Oh boy. 
Uh, that just skipped for a little bit. Okay. Sending in the Obama Snow. Obama Snow will be able to outpace here. Obama Snow choosing not to throw is very interesting. Because now, yeah, that's... I would have preferred to see uh, throw up some energy there by ZZ. Because he can keep switch, but... I guess he's saying I can get it, I can get the shield back from the gator, but undercharge to get one extra. That's a very nice undercharge. So I guess that's why he's doing what he's doing. Is he saying I can get the shield back from the gator? Gator looking for the farm down, gets the farm down. He's looking to send in the Altaria and does clock not yet up for ZZ. This is valuable dragon breath damage getting it closer and closer to crunch range. It's below half HP. We're in crunch plus farm down range now. Yo, what's up, Phoenix? In comes the Gligar. This is Aerial Ace plus farm range. He's going for the Moon Blast. Moonblast, big damage onto the Gligar. Going for the Aerial Ace. This will not knock out, but it will get the Altaria low. Scoffo can shield if he wants to ensure the 10 Dragon Breaths of damage. He's going to let it go. He's going to try and win this with the Gator. He's, he, he's going to go for farm on the Gator. Try and win it with crunches. Oh, he does it. He goes for the CMP tie. He's saying, I'm healthy enough that I can live the Sparks to make double crunch. ZZ, shielding. Scafo shielding back. Clock should be up for ZZ. He'll be able to send in the Lancer. Oh, it's not up! It's barely not up! He's getting farmed! And the Gator gets the farm down! Lantern is dry! He can just double up on Hydros and win this game! Oh, the flexibility of Shadow for Alligator! Oh, beautiful gameplay here by Scafo. ZZ, the timers were perpetually desynced, and he wasn't able to just really get that lantern where it needed to be in the right amount of time. And Scafo punishes those desync timers, gets an energy lead, and takes game number one. That was beautifully played by Scafo there. Ah, uh, you did, Phoenix, yes. <laughs> we're seeing for alligator related crimes. Ooh, Gator into Guz, but this Gator does not have Ice Beam. It's Crunch. It's open team sheet. He's going to have to switch out and does into Altaria. This is a lost matchup for the Altaria. Guzlord wins this. So, in everything but the twos, I believe. So, Scafo now has a business decision to make, and he's not shielding the Altaria. He's going to let that through. Guz can one shield and farm down here. That's what he's going to do. And there's the Lantern in the back, so as long as he wouldn't switch, he has a secondary counter to the Gator. And he gets that big farm down. He's just looking to pivot Gly. That's basically Hydro range, though. He's just gonna stay in saying, you know what? I have the alignment that I need. I have the alignment that I need. I'm just gonna let do this. Goes for a claw. He's thinking he can get to two, but he can't. Yeah, he uh, should have gone for the crunch there because it would have done more. Yo, what's up, Kaza? In comes the Gligar. Pivoting Gator. You, uh, you can just ace. Because Scafo's behind by a turn, and then you can bring in the Lantern. And there it is, right on cue. Scafo going to need to start launching these crunches. We're going to see the no shield by ZZ. Crunch from the gator. Connects into the lantern. Dealing some solid damage. Getting the drop. He gets the defense drop. Scafo makes another crunch. And this will force the shield from ZZ. This forces the shield. ZZ looking for the farm down here. Another debuff. He gets debuffed twice! He has a slam! He loses the energy! Oh, he committed to the farm down to lose CMP! It's at minus two! That slam KOs! And now, 
he's in a position where he can't win. Two slams for the Vigoroth. I mean, this is a one series for Scafo, the double debuff when he needed it the most. And that is going to be, unfortunately, ZZ's day continuing in the loser side of the bracket here. As he gets the double up, Scafo ecstatic. That game looks lost, but the crunch debuffs come through. And I love to see that pop off there. I love to see that pop off there. He is thriving. He's thriving. He made a he made a, a moveset choice to go for crunch, and it pays off there. The question is, even if it's only one debuff, can a body slam KO there? I think a body slam can KO there, even if it's just one debuff. Because Vig into Lantern. And then you put the Lantern at minus one. Does 34%. Rise, unfortunately, lost, so, uh, so he didn't make day two. He didn't make day two. Ooh, now we're into top 16, chat. Weedle versus Stan. Stuttgart Regional Champion. Senior World Champion, Emmy Weedle versus Status Stan. Utrecht top eight. Liverpool top eight. Stuttgart top eight. And EUIC top four. Yeah. It looks like if it was only one debuff, it would have done 34%. So it would have been really close. Yo, what's up, Yo Cello? Yeah, we've had some good battles so far. Yeah, this is going to be an insane match. The RNG was a bit unfortunate in the last match, but I'm excited for this one. That's the nice thing is we get to skip the stalling. Shadow of Lola Insane slash Altaria and the Dirge. All right, game one. We have our lock-ins. M.E. Weedle versus Statistan. A trip to top eight on the line, leading Lantern into Vigoroth. This matchup, you typically prefer to be the Lantern. Vigoroth has the pacing advantage here, but Lantern is just able to hit significantly harder than the Vigoroth. Body slam, instant no shield by Weedle. That's gonna connect into the Lantern. Lantern now going for the harder hitting Thunderbolt. Stan with a decision to make. He lets it go. This will not be able to knock out, but it will be getting Vigoroth right up close to the red health one more spark it will be in the red and Vigoroth will go for another body slam three body slams is 15 counters a thunderbolt plus a surf is 14 so we're going to be able to see weedle outpaced by two turns make the surf and he is going to be able to get there so the surf Stan's just going to concede switch advantage. He wants energy lead on one of his back Pokemon. He has his own Lantern and Skarmory. He sends in the Lantern. But this sets up the alignment perfectly for Weedle. He gets Cresselia on the Lantern. And Skarmory is going to get hit with a Skeledurge. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is going to be tough for Stan. The moment he switches, he's in trouble. Over farming the weight of the turn by Weedle. Patience. And the Grass Knot gets no shielded by Stan. Stan's already seen the Lantern. He's just hoping against hope it's not the Skeledurge. And there it is! The shake of the head by Stan. In comes the Fire Crocodile. Oh my goodness. Yo, congratulations, Dannys. Yo, Danny's, uh, I was actually watching uh, Kurt stream his sets in our Discord, and he queued into you and your Kingdra flip switch versus Gudra. And then we were like, yo, we should say GG's. And then I was like, wait, I don't know how to say GG's to this man because I'm not live. <laughs> but yeah, Kurt Kurt says uh, GG's. He was the, uh, the uh, Gudra player. Yo, what's up, Go Gaming? But the Dirge running ABA strong, saying, you don't get to play Skarmory versus me, young man. And yeah, Stan's just in such a rough spot. Uh, I did cast a yes, as of yesterday. Oh, is your clinching legend win? Yo, that's hype. Dude, Dirge is frying kids. Dirge is absolutely frying kids right now. It is M.E. Weedle. Yes, it is. So 
the uh, correct pronunciation is M E Weedle, not Me Weedle. M E Weedle. Yeah. So it is pronouncing both the uh, letters. But yeah, uh, managed to hit legend yesterday on stream. <laughs> Emmy and chat saying it's me. <laughs> All right, one more win and Weedle's in top eight. Stan needs the equalizer. Altaria into the Alolan Sand Slash. Weedle gets the lead call right again. Yo, it's a blackout. The save switch into the lantern, but switch takes a turn. He's able to outpace and make it to the drill run. Uh, yes, I posted the video like four hours ago, I think. In comes Cresselia. Stan can fire off a lot of energy, but Emmy Weedle's very okay with this. He's going to be able to absorb this energy, no problem. The way to the turn again. Extreme patience from M.E. Weedle. He's just trying to play as precisely as he possibly can. In comes the Altaria, but Altaria's not going to have a good day. He's going to make two Moon Blasts unless Altaria throws a move. Just everything going right for Weedle in these games. Oh my goodness. And I ran kind of a weird team to hit it too. I used Air Slash Tropius. I'm very confident that no one else so far this season on their legend team had an Air Slash Tropius. <laughs> it's a weird pick, but hey, it worked for me. Oh, Vigoroth in the back. Could prove to be a bit of a, an awkward thing here. Lantern, you do typically prefer to be the Lantern in this matchup over the Vigoroth. Yo, let's go, Dannys. I ended up top left in games because I, I couldn't find matches. I'm probably like page five or something. Because I think I am below 3k right now. I am 29.86 is where I am vibing at. Alt is still quite, like, in this format, alt is a really good thing to neutralize Whiskash energy, and that's valuable. It's also, in the zeros, being able to beat something like a Lickitung is very good. Blackout's climbing through 2600 Shadow Tenta. Let's go, dude. That's awesome. Nonsense? Hey, that's the way to do it, Danny's. That's the way to do it. Bro, I was trying to run what I thought was nonsense, and then I went 8-5 and five with it, and Weedle gets the farm down there, and that's game. That's game. You're 276. Let's go, Exeggutor. Yo, Exeggutor. You've got... That's got to be, like, if not legend, then really close. I need his farms down with the Shadow Lull and Sand Slash. Zero, 15, 13, Shadow Tenta. Nice. So that's top eight guaranteed for M.E. Weedle. Let's go, Weedle, man. Let's go, Weedle. Weedle is a member of the community in our Discord. So let's go, Weedle. Top eight. Locked in. Oh, we got Lurgan. Who do they have Lurgan going up against? Lurgan versus... Oh, this is going to be... Uh, it's 3,000, Kairu. It's 3,000. What's up, Gambino? Without Vig? Let's go, King Wings! He's cooking! He's cooking! My goal for Jungle Cup is I am playing zero... Like, this matchup is an insanely good one. But yeah. Uh, yes. So, Emmy Weedle li like, lives in, in Europe. And it is, like public information on like the Draco Viz page and whatnot, but he is from Switzerland. So I I just wanted to preface that by being like it's public information. It's listed on the graphics and stuff like that. So I'm not like revealing personal information or anything like that. Gilly Alton Talent. Ooh, that's a cool team. Ooh, tough lead for Lurgan. And Lurgan running so weak to the Shadow Cash. Stone going for a Scald. The shield by Lurgan. This debuff could make it really, really tough for Lurgan. It's a 50-50 chance. Do we see the debuff? We do see the debuff. 
Debuff comes through. And that's tough. That's very tough. Uh, cause the Pogo video. Oh, why is it on 480? It should be on 1020. Hold on. Uh, that should be better. Sorry about that. Thank you for the heads up, Chris. It's supposed to be auto set to 1080, but it wasn't for some reason. But we got that fixed. I appreciate you letting me know that. Like, Gligar is all the energy in the world, but it's debuffed, so Stone doesn't care. Like, this Aerial Ace is going to do a child-sized amount of damage. Look at that. <laughs> that is an objectively hilarious amount of damage. The clocks are really misaligned here. Like, Lurgans is back up, so he can just bring in the Lantern. Like, Licky has play in this endgame, but down two shields... Shadow Sableye should just take it. Yeah, it's supposed to default to 1080. But maybe it was 480 because it was um, ongoing, basically. That would be my guess. And I appreciate the heads up. Thank you, man. It uh, helps make it better. A better viewing experience for everyone involved. He just wants to let himself get as low as possible because he doesn't want to give a lot of farm to the cash. And yeah, you at this point just bring in the cash and then you just trust that two shield shadow save light wins everything. Now we can change my GPO ELO to 1080p too. <laughs> uh. Yep, and you just say, even if it's Ligatong, shadow save light beats everything. In the two to zeros, it beats everything on his team. So this is GG. He baits because he has to, but this is a very comfortable double shield for Stone. So Stone will take game one. Lurgan really did his best to dance, but two to zero shield Shadow Sableye, unless you have like a Wigglytuff, it's not going to lose to anything. And that foul play does a lot, man. Yep, and then he can just go for a shield and a double up. He has to be mindful to not let Lurgan do a peekaboo, but yeah, he has to be mindful to let Lurgan not do a peekaboo. If Lurgan can do a peekaboo, this is still losable for Stone. Because yeah, it all comes down to this. The peekaboo, does he go for it? Peekaboo! No way! Lurgan! Lurgan! What a play! Unbelievable! Wow! Brings in the Gligar. Instant switch into the 1 HP Lantern to catch it. What a play! What a play! Unbelievable by Lurgan there. Wow. And Stone has to throw there because Stone wins charge attack priority. Ah, oh, that peekaboo was, oh, that was evil, bro. That was evil. Oh my goodness. Dude, Lurgan's a wizard. Oh, what a tough little Lurgan's like, oh, you gotta be kidding me, man. In comes the lantern. Charger bug. Unless he flips switch here, he loses this game. Well, he can force a shield in the zeros, right? Yo, what's up, Elmo? Yeah, the uh, executor shirt is, is is pretty hype. If I'm being transparent. Yeah, dude, Lurgan is a scary, scary man. He's a scary, scary man. You do not fuck with this man when he's battling. <laughs> Oh my god, what an absolute monster. The shield by Lurgan is interesting. Because it'll come down to charge attack priority here on the next. Ooh, if he can get all shields down though. Hold on. 
Oh, he doesn't. That's a surprise to me. That's a surprise to me. Because if he gets all shields down, then he's in a better spot where he can just moonblast it. This will be interesting to see how he plays it out. This will be interesting to see how he plays it out. I don't think this is too... I think you only get one cycle cut, so you can't bring in Crest here. Yeah, you'd only get one cycle cut. Throws here. Because he needs... Like, double Moonblast is 14. Two foul plays is 12. He throws one. He switches in. He'll need to bait here. If this is shielded... That's game. That's game right there. He had to bait to outpace. But that's a situation where... That's also where Stone could potentially call it. Because Stone doubles up here. And now we see if he baited, it's CMP to... uh Yeah, and Lurgan just knows it's over. Lurgan just knows that it's over at this point. Like... It's it it's a true 50-50 call where he can get to a grass knot plus a moonblast. And so it just comes down to he thought Stone would read the situation and call it, but Stone shielded. So unfortunate there. Oh, you do live a moonblast? Even as the shadow you live a moonblast? That's good to know. Also, welcome in, Thorn. I know some people do do run like really high, really like high IV shadows. I didn't realize the shadow also lived it. As you can tell, I'm not a shadow sableye player. That is that uh, that is good to know. That's good to know. It's pretty attack weighted and you barely reach it. Okay, good to know. Thank you. I appreciate the heads up there. I have a couple high rank shadow sables that I could build, but some people are like, you have to build an attack weight one, and I don't have an attack weight one that I could build. I was gonna say switch matters and he gives it up! And he gives it up! This ace is nice because he can put it in a range where one move from Crest can knock out. Yeah, that's so nice for Lurgan. And then Licky avoids this, which means this is just a one game for Lurgan instantly. It's just instantly one game. Henry, a G-Fisk player? <laughs> when it first came out, I did make a G-Fisk video. And then I was like, wow, this Pokemon is cringe. And then I didn't really run it ever again. Except when I'm like scrimming. One of my teammates like, yo, I need uh, practice. And then they were going up against a G-Fisk team. So I ran it and then they screenshotted my avatar using G-Fisk and posted it in my server being like, Henry runs G-Fisk. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's very rude. And Stone's just gonna go for energy here. And he's down a shield. Gligar still has has energy too. Oh, was that a debuff? Oh, jeez, the ten percent chance. The ten percent chance. Ooh, charge attack priority, and it's debuff. So you live a foul play here. Yeah, I had transferred the only Azu I had made, so I cannot be caught using Azumarill. Because I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> it's impossible! You will never catch me lacking running Azumarill, because I physically do not have one. Since in the Licky. Double foul play, but this is rough for Stone, because he's throwing debuff energy. But he can't really afford to switch, because Azu is going to get clapped. It's definitely like a uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place type situation here. He's trying to manage energy as best as he can, but yeah, this is this is looking rough. Looking very, very rough.
Yep, and he goes for the whip. And he's not in a range where bubbles plus a play rough can knock out, and stone isn't running hydro. As you can see, the sigh of relief there from Lurgan, he's like, let's go, dude. The big sigh of relief. Going for the whip. And whip plus licks is able to two-shot. A whip by itself doesn't two-shot, but with the licks it does. I mean, this doesn't knock out. I mean, you can shield it because you have a shield, but it doesn't, it doesn't knock out. Licky, too bulky. You'll go for a catch just to be a dick, even though it's unnecessary. Damn. <laughs> Do it, Lurgan. Over farm and then catch. <laughs> he went for it. He went for it. All right, Lurgan takes it. All right, who we got up next? I forget his name, but that's Pablo for sure. I remember him from, from the Inadequins finals. Yo, what's up, George? Who is Pablo battling? Stream, tell me, please. Right now. Oh, it's Sandodu. Ooh, tough lead for Sandodu here. Guz into Vigo. Crest pivot? Pablo has no response to a crest pivot. That's a bit awkward. But that's what no skarmory does to a motherfucker, Chad. People can just pivot crest. People can just pivot crest. After day one, one of my top picks would have been Mr. McCalvin, but he looked shook in that first set. He played basically perfectly on day one, but he looked, after that lag game, he he just looked like he was just shook. And he wasn't able to recover from that. Pablo forced to go down a shield. And Sendodu, just gonna let it go. Uh, Skytech doesn't knock out here. And he's gonna make another one. If he tries to farm down. <laughs> Dude, a high rank Cress is a menace. I need to get one of these, bro. And he gives up switch. GG's. GG's. Thank you so much for the battle. Yo, what's up, Zoe? Yo, what's up, Melissa? Welcome in, welcome in. And I'm shielding a frustration? Oh, no. But yeah, welcome in, everyone. Hello, hello. Hope everyone is having a wonderful weekend. And I just put it into wing attacks plus ace range. Yeah. If you want to shield throw two in the move, you can. He's just going to let it go. Two in the move, very nice. Does he live this? Barely does not, it does knock out. Gly versus Gly. Sendodu not gonna play the charge set priority game. Yo, is it Stardust? Yeah, if I don't get to say hi, apologies. I'm doing my best to say hi to people, but with watching these games, the games are very intense, so sometimes I am missing it. The Shadow Swamp. Ooh, that's a bit awkward. Honestly, I, you probably just need to stay in with Skarmory and play to get a shield advantage and then just bring in Quag and then trust in the fact that if they have a Skarmory, sorry, if they have a Swamp, then they're probably weak to you, Fisk, in the back. Swap would be a bit tough. I haven't I haven't seen one personally, but yeah, I'd probably just play out the zeros with a Skarmory, let myself get KO'd, bring in Quag, because Quag can take a move, try and get rid of it with Quag, and then just trust that once the Swampert is gone, then the Ufisk is probably good and back. But it would be it would be a bit awkward for sure. I've seen some Whizcash. I've seen some Quags. But Swamp Swamp would pose a unique problem, I think. Yeah, so these are all still winners out of the bracket, and then they'll be doing the loser side after. 
Ooh, they're showing us on the big screen here. That's kind of cool. The Licky Pivot, and there's the Guzzlord. Oh, no. Oh, boy. I, well, Thorn, uh, I went to twitch.television slash Thorn and I saw one return Pidgeot. One, singular one. <laughs> In my battles, I did not see any. Yeah, Sandodu is definitely cooking. He is definitely cooking. He's playing very well. Crunch here is interesting. Because I don't think Crunch sets up a farm down unless there's a debuff. And he gets the debuff! So he gets the farm down! Oh, he doesn't get the farm down! Oh, he has to go down a shield! Hold on. Yo, what's up, Daxie? Hope you're doing well, homie. Uh, dude, the battles have been insane, man. The battles have been insane. Whoever wins, I'm hoping to do, like, a, a full-length, like, edited video on their run. Because this is the biggest Pokemon Go tournament ever. And it, the level of competition, barring a few exceptions, has been absurdly, absurdly strong. It's been so good. It's been so good. And we have at least one of my Discord members guaranteed in the top eight out of the 320 battlers. I mean, we don't. You know, the Gligar pivot denying the farm. I like it. Easy no shield here. Yeah. Hope you've been doing well, homie. Hope you've been doing well. Gly versus Gly. Uh, Rise, unfortunately, fell just short of making it to day two. Shadow Zard, Shadow Groudon, Shadow Axka. That sounds hilarious. I hope that you never see a water type. <laughs> if you see a water type, you're going to have a bad day. There was a nasty CMP sack swap earlier. It was... It was Stan versus Onion. That play was insane. Yeah, Tabu Coco is a giga chat, dude. Yeah, name, name one water type chat. You can't. It's impossible. It's a fake typing. <laughs> They, they throw nice energy awareness here by Pablo, but I'd rather be S Sendodu in this moment. Uh, it was Stan ver versus Onion. Stan caught a dig on his Azu and then CMP sacked with an Ice Beam, so the Ice Beam knocked out the uh, Shadow Gligar. Looks like one turn occurred. How do you get that right? What a prediction! Oh my god! What a prediction! How do you get that right? I'm at a loss! I'm completely at a loss! What an unbelievable prediction by Sandodu, man! Holy shit! What a prediction! And he's dry so he knows he can do four! He does three, but <laughs> Pablo's like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Oh, that is rough. That is rough. Yeah, and he just gets the grass knot. That. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sandonu is cooking, bro. <laughs> bro, bro emoted on him. Me personally. If someone made a soul ring catch and emoted on me, I might have to fight them. I'm gonna be serious. I might have to fight them. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous, bro. That is ridiculous. Holy. Yo, oh, we get Scoffover's Dune next. Yo, this matchup's gonna be hype. The Shadow for Alligator. Yo, Dune faced the other gator earlier. Yeah, I don't know how they managed to break the grass bubbles again. All right, on VG, uh, we just saw the Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. <laughs> Terrestrializing. Night Slash Ape. Very standard across the board. Again, chat, uh, tell me which of these Pokemon resists flying, please. 
Please tell me which of these Pokemon is flying. Skarm is so wicked, bro. Skarm is so wicked. It is interesting, Star Party, yeah. Oftentimes, in these more condensed metas, you can learn really specific matchup knowledge that can help you climb. I am Pirate King Wings, yes. I can't just leaderboard in one game. I have to leaderboard in two, Kappa. <laughs> Ooh, Shadow Cash, good lead. But here's the thing, Shadow Cash is kind of bad into, into charge above. Like, Shadow Cash is so much better in so many other matchups, but Shadow Cash is way worse. Like, this is the downside to Shadow Cash is this matchup right here. Is Chargebug is so much, like, look at this X Scissor damage, and you're gonna be like, oh, okay. That was competing. Um, probably some derivation on the Shadow Zone line that I ran versus, uh, Weedle. Sorry, the Shadow Zone line that I ran versus Axon. Shad like, double steel with Shadow Zone plus Skarmory, I think, is a starting point for me. And then it's about just building out from there so that you have stuff that, that can be fired. Alt, Pivot's Glide. What does he have in the back? Oh, is that Lantern? It is Lantern. That's a problem. That's a problem, man. Like, on my Shadow Zone team, Gudra did nothing. So I'd probably look to replace Gutra because that thing did that thing did nothing for me. I brought it no games. Was that a debuff? Oh it was! The Moonblast debuff! Oh no! Now an ace doesn't knock out, Scaffa will instantly no shield this. The Moonblast debuff is brutal there. And now two shield cash is just winning for Scaffo. We've seen two Moonblast debuffs on stream today, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, two shield cash is just completely unlosable here. Ooh, the pivot out. Going for the Scald. Dune is going to really try and get debuffs here, but Scaffo can overfarm Mud Bomb for a knockout. Do we see the debuff? No, we don't. Yeah. I mean, even with the debuff, Lantern was still cooked, but Dune is going to play and try. But you have a full health lantern here. The lantern has no energy on it. He brings in Gly. If Scafo overfarms properly, there is no way for Dune to win this game. Because he can knock out with a mud bomb here. That should be a one game to Scafo. Because the mud shots plus two mud bombs should knock out. was non-shadow cash she'd be cooked but shadow cash should be vibing here like check this mud bomb damage shadow cash smacks lantern around look at that that's some big boy damage right there yep gg and the funny thing is is i said it as soon as scalpo did <laughs> didn't bring the gator but won the game No replay, no. But that Moonblast debuff was crushing for dude. Alright. Ooh. Good lead for doing immediate pivot out here. Oh, he gets Skarmoried. But he's trying to set up a Wiggly Tough sweep. He's trying to bait out the Skarm to set up a Wiggly Tough sweep here. Like, this is an AVB style team from Scafo. He wants the two shield. But here's the thing. Wigglytuff is not going to be able to just two shield its way through an entire Shadow Gligar plus a Lickitung. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You, you guarantee always land one ace at minimum? <laughs> True. Oh, no. There's the sky attack. There's there's no way to farm down here. And, and, and he's just... Uh, trying to remember the residual energy saying he has one residual. That's why he held it up. After it clears copyright juice, yes. Goes for the Scald. This 
Mud Bomb actually would have been pretty close there if it knocked out. I think a Mud Bomb could have knocked out because it is only one state resisted. In comes the Wigglytuff and it's Gligar. And this is just a one game for Dune. As long as Dune doesn't bozo the timing, but Dune never bozos the timing. Look at that perfect timing. Perfect timing right there. Beautiful stuff. But yeah, this is... Rise, unfortunately, didn't make day two. So he had a pretty good day one run, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to make day two. But yeah, you are always able... Like, as long as you have a shield, you can always land three aerial aces. And going straight aerial ace is the objectively correct play in this matchup. Because watch right here. He is going to make two more aerial aces. And Scafo doesn't have a way to win this game now. Because he's shielding. Yep. He lets it go. He's going to try and mud shot down with the cash. Clock not yet up for Dune. Gets this. This means... This basically puts it in a slam range. Because it's a shadow. And clocks up. He can switch out. And two Shadow Scalds come close to knocking out, but they don't. And Dune should be running a very high rank like a tongue. So we're going to see this. It'll take it to about 55% HP. But, yeah. Dune. I mean, the, the, the debuff occurs, but it's not going to matter. Because he can just double up on slams here. Goes for a Mud Bomb. The shield from Dune. And Dune knows that he can make two slams before the Scald is reached, even with this bait. So he can just do three licks here. Or he just does one and the move, and then he'll just go for his move. Yep, so Dune gets the equalizer. Dune gets the equalizer here. Pretty comfortably at that. Like, Scafo had a plan there. If he had, like, Ape plus Licky Core, he would have been vibing. But he had the Gligar, and Gligar can do well enough into the Wiggles that you're not going to be able to win that. All right, we go to game three. Get that replay out of here. Oh, mama. Okay. Game three. Lantern into Vigoroth. Again, I'd always rather be the Lantern here. Vig has to go down shields if it wants switch. Yo, what's up, Kevin? It's been going well. It's been going well. Slam. Connects. Going for the surf. Decision time for Scafo. Scafo lets it go. The Surf will land onto the Vigoroth. Thunderbolt is more efficient than Surf, yes. He goes for the Rock Slide, because Rock Slide will do more. It's less efficient, but it does more damage. So if he thinks he can only get to one, he'll go for the Rock Slide. And this allows him, if he wants to shield and counter down for Switch, but he's not. He's going to concede Switch advantage. And that could prove to be an interesting decision. As we take a look at the back lines here, in comes the Whizcatch. He's going to pivot into the Gligar. Goes for the ace before he gets the Scald. On the leaderboard? Uh, I should be on there. Uh, my current ELO is 2986. I top lefted some sets. And then was able to climb back up. Because I couldn't get games above 3k. Yeah. I, uh, after I hit Legend, I top lefted some sets. And then climbed back up. So it should be 2986 on boards. Sends in the ult. Oh, judging by that damage, he got a Scald debuff. I looked away for a second, but... Oh, you're good, Elmo. <laughs> you're good. Welcome back to the present. I like denying the cash farm, because cash farm is too scary. Possible in jungle. I mean, anything's possible. Does it mean should you? No, it does not. But it'll say like rank 24, legend, and then it'll say 2986. And if it says rank 24, then that means they're already legend. And Dune is, Dune is feeling good about this because he just has licky energy now. The moon blast. Oh, look at that energy there. He can switch. Scafo might have to try and call a bait here. He does, but it's the whip. It lands! Goodbye, Shadow Cash! And Dune advances into top eight. 
Do it advances into top eight, man. Are we back to Weedle? Oh, it looks like we are back to Weedle. All right, we're now in top eight. Weedle versus Lurgan. Oh, this is going to be an amazing series. It's going to be an amazing series. Yo, what's up, Alden? Um, Wing Attack and Aerial Ace is a must. As for your second move, you have some flexibility there. If you want toxic debuff strats, it's Bubble Beam. If you want coverage against dragons, it's Ice Beam. If you want a get out of jail free card against steel types, then there's Water Pulse. Water Pulse is the best DPE move. I personally prefer Water Pulse, but it can depend a lot on what you run with it and what you need your man team to do. Either way, if you run it, you need very good checks against Electric in the back, because obviously Electric will completely ruin man team no matter the moveset. But... This is going to be an amazing series, man. This is going to be an amazing series. Weedle versus Lurgan. A trip to, I believe, top three on the line. Because if you make it... So, this is for a trip to winner's finals. This is for a trip to winner's finals, chat. And winner's finals is guaranteed top three. Because if you lose in winner's finals, you go to loser's finals. So, this is for a trip to top three and a trip to tomorrow. So whoever wins this best of three doesn't have to play any more games today. They are just done for the day. Oh, tough lead for Weedle. Leading Lantern into the Cresselia. We're going to see a safe switch into his own Cresselia answered with the Lickitung. This is definitely a moment where Cresselia IVs can come in clutch. High rank Cresselia can potentially force a shield here. And we see they are chatting about it a little bit. And this could come down to IV check on the Cresselia. If they're competing at this tournament, they're probably running exceedingly high rank Cresselias. Going to be firing off the body slam. Immediate no shield by Weedle. This body slam is going to connect. It is not going to be doing a whole lot of damage to that Cresselia as Cresselia continues to farm. Lickitung is going to be below half HP once the second Moonblast connects. Weedle taking advantage of the fact that he does have that energy advantage here. Weedle continuing to farm. He's trying to get to another Moonblast. Lurgan very close to two more Body Slams. And this Body Slam is going to connect. Can Body Slam two shot here? The Body Slam, oh, it's gonna be really close. It's gonna be close. I think the Crest can live this on one. It's gonna be an extreme IV check right here. Body Slam into the Cresselia, does not KO. He gets the Moonblast. And that right there is the power of a high rank Cresselia. Now, can the Lickitung hang on? Lurgan doesn't want to risk it. He's going to be shielding up the Lickitung. And that is a Moonblast Cresselia forcing a shield from a Lickitung. He's sending in the Skeledurge. And Skeledurge can completely invalidate the energy from the Lickitung. And Lickitung doesn't get there. And Lurgan's about to get swept, chat. Lurgan is about to get swept. In comes the Cresselia, and you can see there, he's like, let's go, dude, let's go. He's full steady, the Shadow Ball. It's officially Flat Fuck Friday. It's been extended open hours to Saturday as this crocodile looks to completely sweep. The fact that he sent back in the Cresselia, he's looking at the team sheet. He has to know that it's going to be the Annihilate in the back. In comes the Annihilate, going for the disarming voice, and Lurgan... There's not really anything he can do. You can see there, the, the shrug is like, what do I do against this crocodile, man? There's nothing he can do other than just get completely 1v3'd. He is going to be shielding up the Night Slash as the Skeledurge. It's almost into the red health, but there's still so much value remaining here. He's going to make it to the harder hitting Shadow Ball. This is going to be an immediate removal from the field of the Annihilate. Shadow Ball connects. Down goes Annihilate there. The hand gesture as well as it just disappears. And Lurgan just stops tapping. The onslaught of Skeledurge is too much to handle. And M.E. Weedle is one win away from making it to day number three. Oh, wow. That was, that was beautifully done by Weedle. All set up by the Cresselia save switch. That high rank Cresselia forcing a shield from Lickitung. And then the Skeledurge with energy up three incinerates with a 60 energy head start and up a shield completely devastating Lurgan in the endgame. Oh my goodness.
What a first match. Lurgan needs answers and he needs them rapidly here. Because that Skeledurge was a huge problem. Weedle's been able to leverage Skeledurge energy very successfully multiple times. Gligar into Cresselia. We'll take a peek in the back. And we do see the Skeledurge lurking in the back. Lurgan running ABA strong to the Skeledurge. Going for the Moonblast. Losing charge stack priority to the Gligar. High rank means that it has very good PvP IVs. So for a Cresselia, very low attack and extremely, extremely high defense. High defense Cresselia is Giga Chad. It's so good. And it's going to be a CMP tie here. Grass not to dig, so Weedle's not even going to throw it. Weedle has a choice to make. A dig, I believe his Cresselia should survive this with fractional HP remaining. And it does. Again, high rank Cress. Barely able to hang on. And he's going to win the lead. Winning the lead here is nice. But... Ooh, this could be interesting. Lurgan sends in the Annihilate to get the energy head start. And now he has a choice. Does he bring in the Lantern? Does he bring in the Dirge? Either way, this Ligatung is looking to be a problem. He brings in the Skeledurge. He's going to be baiting here. Weedle's thinking about it. He knows it could be a bait. He shields. And that is good for Lurgan. The more shields that are down, the better Lurgan. Oh, he gets the boost. Oh, you can see there the banging of the fist on the table. You can't blame him as he's going to have to deal with a boosted Annihilate. And that is going to be such an annoying Pokemon to deal with here as the Nihilip will be able to make a Night Slash versus the Skeledurge and boosted, it's going to KO. Ah, that kind of removes any possible win con for Weedle here. As the boosted Annihilate is just going to be a nightmare to deal with. If you switch, a boosted Shadow Ball is hitting your Lantern. He switches. Look at this boosted Shadow Ball right here. Lantern going to immediately be put basically in the red health from this Shadow Ball. Watch this damage right here. The Shadow Ball nearly picking up the one hit KO. He tries for the Thunderbolt. He gets there, but the boosted Annihilate getting Lurgan the equalizer. He's so desperately needed as he fights to stay alive on the winner's side of the bracket. Lickitung farms down the Lantern. In comes that Skeledurge and Skeledurge I mean, ah, oh boy. Yeah. And he makes the whip. I'm fortunate for Weedle there. The Night Slash boost was brutal. I'm not quite sure what you're referring to, Trip. All right. Decisive Game 3 coming up, chat. Decisive Game 3 coming up. Lurgan versus Weedle. A trip to Day 3 on the line. The Night Slash boost was massive for Lurgan in that endgame. And a great lead for Weedle. And Lurgan ran ABA weak to Cresselia. He ran Dugong and Annihilate ABA. But the Cresselia is here to completely punish it. The Cresselia is here to completely punish it. Not gonna lie, if I was competing trying to get to a top three and I lost because of Night Slash Boost, I would be equally mad. I would be equally mad, bro. What a frustrating way to, to lose a game. To lose to a 12.5% chance? Brutal. Absolutely brutal. It's an incredibly frustrating way to go. He switches in the one counter he has. Gligar answered with a Lantern. And this sets up Dirge so well. He just lets it go. He's looking at the team sheet. He's saying, I just get energy on Dirge. I just get energy on Dirge, man. Yo, what's up, Tag? How's it going? 100 Shadow Ente. Sheesh, clashing on it. Let's go, dude. Nice counting by Lurgan. But I mean, you just incinerate down with Dirge. He's been doing this time and time again. And it keeps working. It keeps working, man. It keeps working. 
He just says, nah, I'm just gonna simply get energy on Skeledurge, and it's too good. It's too good, bro. He has to bring in the Dugong. He baits him. He does live a drill run. Ah, uh, he does shield it. He does shield it. Yeah, he's playing Skeledurge insanely well. Nicely timed here. Going for the Shadow Ball. Oh, he switches, but Weedle didn't switch! Weedle didn't switch. He lets it go. Disarming a minus one will not knock out. And now he sends in Cresselia. Cresselia can just go for Grass Knots now. This will force the shield from Lurgan. And Weedle's just looking for Skeledurge farm. This is not Night Sash range. It's not far off Night Slash range, but I'll have to keep countering it to try and get it into the Night Slash range. And he, oh, he miscounts. He miscounts. Oh no, disaster strikes for Lurgan. The Grass Knot KOs, so much energy lost. In comes the Dugong and it's all over. And M.E. Weedle clinches his spot in day number three. Guaranteed a top three finish at the European International Championships. Let's go, Weedle. Lurgan trying to maximize as much farm as he possibly can, but misremembered the residual energy for Weedle, and he can't quite get there. Oh, man. That was tough. That was tough right there. We know Weedle has a god crest, bro. We know Weedle has a god, has a god crest. He had to try and, like, min-max as much energy as he possibly could. What a game. So we have one of our top three finishers for, for today. Now we get to see our other. Sandodu versus Dunebug. It is Zionic, yes. Zionic lives in the UK. So that he is one of the casters for when they're over in Europe. Well, uh, a safe bet would be picking Weedle, because he's one of the three guaranteed in day three. <laughs> and our second person in day three is going to be one of Sandodu or Dunebug. Dunebug, one of the five Americans in Top Cut here. So it is a European championship, but we have five Americans. Oh, what a great lead for Sandodu here. Lantern into the Skarmory. We're going to see the save switch into the Shadow Gligar, but Lantern will be able to outpace here. He's going to make it to the Surf. Taking advantage of the fact that he can deny Dunebug a full sneak. Axon did make day two, yes. He's on the loser side of the bracket, but... Yeah, uh, after this, it'll be the basically almost all of the, the loser's bracket still to play. So we're watching all of winners, and then we'll watch all of losers. So this is the final winner's bracket game of the day. Yep. Yeah, they're doing it differently because there's so many people on the winner's side of the bracket because of how big the tournament is. You know, just casually the biggest Pokemon Go tournament the world has ever seen. <laughs> oh, what? How did Lickitung win CMP over Gligar? Hello? Oh, it just didn't register his tap. It didn't register his tap. That? Eh, I'd have to watch that back. I'd have to watch that back. He wins switch, but he's down two shields. Oh, no. And the, and the guzzler didn't know where to go. He actually didn't need switch. Guzzlord had nowhere to go, bro. Well, he gets a shield back here with the dig. But now, I mean, Lantern just sweeps him. Double surf, easy claps for the Lantern. He night slashes here. Dewey's just trying to get whatever damage he can on this thing, but this should just be a pretty straightforward Lantern sweep. This is an unbelievable tournament to get to watch. Uh, cause I didn't register. Oh, he sends in the guzz. Hold on. 
Dune bank to move. Dune bank the night slash for sure. If Dune can manage, I don't think Dune can manage energy carefully enough to win this game, especially with that debuff. Yeah. I don't think because he he really needs to exit with a brave bird. Can he do two in the move here? Hold on. Hold. Hold. Oh, it doesn't do enough. Oh, he gets it. But a night slash doesn't knock out. A night slash doesn't knock out from this range. It's close, but it doesn't. A night slash doesn't knock out, man. It doesn't knock out. It's really close, but it doesn't. Lantern takes game one for Sandodu. Oh, man. I don't know, JJ. We'll have to see if a Dune decides to dispute it or if he just lets it go. Are they reviewing it? Looks like they're talking it over. Okay. Looks like they are talking it over. Oh, uh, this is after it happened, bro. That's after it happened. That's, that's not the right spot to look at. That's not the right spot to look at. That is after the issue happened. That is after the issue happened, bro. They did rule a rematch. Okay. It is CCO judging, yes. CCO judges almost all of these. But yeah. If we go back here... Here... Yeah, it uh it just didn't register as tap, so yeah. Cause he clicks it here, and then you can see it uh, gives him the energy, but it just didn't register as tap. So that's a there because he wouldn't have had to go down two shields that way, so that's why they grant a rematch. All right, we're back. Um, Palasha made day two on the loser side of the bracket. Tomahawk and a mind joke were playing, but unfortunately didn't make day two. All right, Gligar versus Gligar. Favorite Pokemon? Shuckle. Shuckle's my boy. Let's take a peek in the back here. Oh man, Annihilate is wicked in back. Sandodu wins charge attack priority. Does he just pivot his own Licky? He doesn't. He's staying in to get him. Oh, he banks a move. And he baits out the Annihilate. And that's game over. Sandodu wins. Sandodu wins. He baits out the Annihilate. And then he just gets to guzz the, the Licky in the back. Nope. Uh, for a rematch, uh, you can use entirely different teams. He slam baits because that's what you have to do to win the ones. You have to slam bait. And he shields it. Yeah, that's, that, that's tough. There's a very specific breakpoint tech um, ape that can farm down there, but it doesn't look like dude has it. But nah, man. Dune is. It's hard to argue against one of either Dune or Lyle being the best player in the world right now. So.
Elmo, you see, I, I would say that, but unfortunately, to be a favorite PokeTuber, they have to upload on YouTube. <laughs> you need a bulk point, too? Okay, got you, Thorn. See, Thorn, Thorn is, a, is a knower of ball when it comes to these, like, intricate matchup information. He has an energy advantage. That's the only thing he has going for him here. Yo, what up, Chrome? But I still think Sandodu just doubles up on Claws and wins this game. Why are we crunching? Please stop crunching. Trainer, please stop crunching. Why are we crunching? I had... What game I missed last time was Wireless Scott. Uh, we are in the winners oh does this knock out does it knock out does it knock out it didn't oh oh man this is why you double claw that's why you double claw bro that is why you double claw Almost through that. Almost through that. Why are we praying for crunch debuffs? That's why you double claw, man. Yeah, you uh, need the pacing of two claws versus energy advantage, Licky. Game one win on one HP goes to Sandodu. Dude needing an equalizer here. If Sandodu wins one of the next two, he is going to lock in a spot in day three going up against Weedle in winner's finals. Dunebug needs to win two in a row. Dunebug's been here before. He's a multiple-time regional champion. I think a three-time regional champion at this point. Skarm into Guzzlord. Good lead for Dune. And Sandodu ran triple weak to Skarm! He ran triple weak to Skarm, man! Oh boy, that's a choice. The Skarm disrespect will not be tolerated. That's a choice right there. He's just going for an overload strategy. He's going for the bird, going for the jugular here. Does send Dodu shield. He does not. Bye bye. Down goes Guzzlord. He's looking to pivot Gligar. In comes the Cresselia. Immediate pivot into the Gligar. He needs to save that Skarmory and reset the three-stage defense drop. Playing AAA teams are some of my favorite, Thorn. Like, my Bastion is not real and it cannot hurt me squad is very fun. <laughs> you can't use Zerud because it's too high of CP. It's too high of CP. You can't use the room. Settling for the grass knot. He's still going to have to deal with that Skarm in the endgame. He's trying to get into ace range. It's still not in ace range. Yeah, he has to dig. Yo, it's a Mr. Mumbles. The triple weak to Reggie at DC Strats. Oh, God. Uh, because some people from the U.S. and all over the world flew to London to compete. Skarm Ivies, uh, I run a really high rank one and I like it. Um, I'm not super familiar if there's any particular checks that are needed. The Skarm still isn't in dig range yet. Oh, he brings in the cash! Anticipating the blind switch! Oh, that's a nice read! That's a nice read, man! Oh, that's a nice read. Do you see the debuff? I, uh, I was like, I didn't see it. <laughs> At the catch. Oh, that's weird, Chrome. That's weird. Who ran which team, Drew? 
If it's the Town Flame team, I do not feel bad because I told people not to run it in the video like five times. I was like, don't run this team. <laughs> so I will not. Yeah, I told people in that video multiple times, do not run the team. So if they ran the team, I I am innocent. I'm innocent. Listening is uh, listening is an important virtue. I said at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the video, don't, don't run this team. This video is for entertainment only. The Basti doesn't exist thing. I mentioned it like a lot in that video. So I am, I do not feel bad at all. It was the uh, Talonflame Lickitung Guzzlord team. And I mentioned like eight times in the video. Like, hey, uh, I ran this. I'm featuring it because I had success with it, but don't run it. Hello. Hello. Because if you see a Bastion, you ought to lose. Although, to be fair, I'm going to make a YouTube short. I did beat a Bastion with that team, and it was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> like, that's why I think it's very important. Like, at the end of videos, I will give a review and be like, hey, I think this is a good team. This is worth running. This team, I struggled with. The save switch Guzzlord strat. In comes the Skarmory. Wrath in the back. If Dune ends up getting a like bait or nuke call wrong here, this could get uncomfortable. Because Sky Attack doesn't knock out. He has to bird here. But if Sandodu shields, he can potentially try and force this. does he gets it right and now he can claw uh claw would have KO'd there dune gives up switch wow okay he gives up switch yeah i i try and be really specific about like whether I believe a team is good for climbing or whether it's like a fun thing that I'm doing because I like making videos. And in that one, I feel like I was very specific about, hey, don't, don't run this. He throws on two anticipating a no shield so he gets a free wing attack. But yeah, welcome in Kobe. I hope the legend push is going well. Running of fighters don't exist team yeah a lot of people run very weak to polyrath uh axon uh he's on the loser side of the racket so after winners is done uh, then they'll do losers <laughs> yo that's uh that that's fun chrome that's fun yeah chrome chrome uh, uh whooped me good in today's video need to read the team gotcha yeah the uh, the mandy team i think is genuinely a really good team and i've had people in discord be like yo i climbed a bunch with it and that was awesome that's why i think oh he can't double up i can't double up he has to switch but with an icy wind debuff here a whip won't ko he, oh, he goes for a slam to get damage before he gets debuffed, but a slam doesn't. But he's just getting countered down. I think he had to commit to the whip. I think he had to commit to the whip, even though he's getting debuffed. I, he, he had to commit to whip. I, I don't think he gets there. He doesn't. He's getting countered down. And Sandodu is going to secure his spot in day three in the winner's finals and dunebug is going to drop down to losers so sandodu pivotally getting the shield call right in the mid game flipping switch advantage and being able to take the game so we have two of our top three for tomorrow set now we go to the loser side of the bracket 
So Dune will be in losers round six. We're going to have to go through like losers round one, two, three, four, and five. So Dune is going to have like a four hour break. Dune's going to have like a four hour break. It's Axon, world champion, finalist, Portland regional champion, Portland top eight, and Caleb second, second and second. So this is some American on American violence, unfortunately. We have five Americans in top cut, and unfortunately, it's about to be four. Unfortunately, it's about to be four. Because we got Caleb versus Axon here. Let's take a peek at these teams. All right, standard Bastion on DGen strats from Caleb. And Axon. Oh, he's so weak to Basti, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> Weak to Basti, weak to Basti, weak to Basti, weak to Basti. Uh oh. Um, in day two, the the matchups are done based on what groups they were in. Like Shadow Dinair can win ones, but it's still not something you want to rely on. It's gonna force him into a lot of ready steel versus cash, which means that if I'm Caleb, I'm bringing Annihilate every single game. Caleb's just gonna bring Annihilate because everything that beats Annihilate loses to Basti. So it's literally just gonna be Kayla bringing Annihilate. Oh, terrible lead for Axon. The save switch into the Shadow Cache. Axon knows this is a horrible fucking matchup for him. X Scissors goes Dugong. This is so rough, man. He actually doesn't bring the ape, which is a big surprise to me. But as we see, Axon ran really weak to ape because he has to. He has to. The, the threat of Basti is too much. I'm a little surprised we didn't see ape here. This is still Caleb's game to lose very much, but... Caleb's Mandy 11,000 CP. Well, no wonder it's doing so well for him. Apple. Shadow Zard with energy is very scary, but it's debuffed energy. Yo, two wing attacks. Yes. Oh, the bait game. The bait game, man. The bait game. Shielding it up. Baiting again? Oh god. Can Zard sweep this, bro? Can Zard sweep this, man? Yeah, throw it immediately. Oh, he catches up the bus. Oh man. That's a beautiful catch by Caleb. That catch is just winning for Caleb. Because Chargebug just wins now. Chargebug just wins now. Because Chargebug is not in a range where one move from Reggie KOs. So Reggie needs like 240 energy here. He could really benefit from a really nice undercharge on the Mandibuzz maybe. But he is just going to get rid of it and just say I don't want to take any more damage. But realistically, this is just losing for Axon. Yeah, this is just losing for Axon. Because one zap doesn't knock out here. Uh, that was a while back, Sleeping Troubles, but I did not participate, no. I think it was during the old interlude season a while back. Because they did a YouTuber tournament, but it wasn't really something I was interested in. Like, nowadays, I am enjoying these Show 6 series. And the support on them has been pretty good, which is nice. Oh, he tries for it. He tries for it. Making memes about Bill, I will be there no matter what. Yo, what's up, Randall? There we go. Mandy CP's fixed, but yeah. Game one goes to Caleb. But yeah, this matchup is absurdly hard for Axon. If Axon manages to win this, it'll be a Christmas miracle, bro. Ooh. Reggie and Amandy, that's a good lead, though. 
Save switch Shadow Cash. In comes the Shadow Dragonair. And there's the ape in the back. That's what we were waiting for. That's what we were waiting for, man. But here's the thing. Shadow Cash wins zeros. Because the DBs plus a slam don't knock out. So he'll have to go down a shield. And if he goes down a shield, then he just loses to ape. If he gives up switch, then, well, he loses to ape. So... Yeah. His options are losing to Annihilate or losing to Annihilate. Lock on down. Does he get this? It'll be really close. Oh, is that DRE? I think that's DRE. That sucks for Axon, man. It was DRE. No. Oh, that hurts. That hurts, bro. That hurts. It's uh, the new term for new mechanic. Yeah, this is, at this point, an unwinnable game for Axon. Maybe if he gets every debuff, and if Caleb falls asleep, there's a chance. But this should be basically unwinnable. And no debuff. Uh, since for damage registration error, I do not play Clash, no. Yeah, this is just... If he shields this, then he gets Shadow Balled. Again, I don't think it's ever been tried, but I think hiring a medieval knight to run on stage with uh, one of those jousting lances and just fight your opponent while, while they're fighting on their phone is a viable yet untested strategy. I don't feel like we have really explored the uh, potential ramifications of just hiring medieval knights to IRL fight your opponent Anytime you think you're losing in a battle. All I'm saying is, could be an option. Hasn't been tried. Hasn't been tried. At TPCI. That's, that's basically the win con in this game right now. That's basically the win con in this game. Good team with Master League Shadow Entei. Uh, Master League Shadow Entei, that is a Pokemon. But yeah, this is just a, a 2-0 for Caleb, unfortunately. Axon ran a cool Zard team, but yeah, it's over. Yep, and like that, unfortunately, Axon's run at EUIC comes to an end. He finishes top 32, which is cool. I have my favorite team this tourney. I like Weedle trusting in Dirge when no one else trusts in Dirge. I liked the construction of Sod's team. Unfortunately, Sod didn't make day two, but I liked the construction of Sod's team a lot. Yeah, that was a nightmare matchup for Axon. Yo, Mr. VGC. All right, and losers. Yo, it's Jocks. Let's go, Jocks. And EJ has a Dragonite. This matchup sucks as the Gligar because the Dragonite is going to force a shield, double shield, and farm you all the way down. Aw, oh, thank you, Executor, for uh, explaining that in a concise manner. But yeah, as the Gligar, this is unfun because the Dragonite will always just two shield and farm you for sport. And there's dueling Skarms and dueling Electrics. But the charge bug in the back is gonna be an issue. He pivots Skarm. Goes for a superpower. Let's it go. And he brings in Scarm. That's a good read by EJ. That's a good read by EJ. 
feeling that it's a bait out. Putting the Skarm where it can actually get some value. People were playing UL yesterday. I was getting better UL cues than uh, Jungle Cup cues. Uh, where are you sitting at, Mini? Yeah, so now we'll get to see... They, they won't show all of losers, but, but they'll show some of losers. Mid-2000s, dang, that's unfortunate. Just going for the bird, trying to limit farm. Would love to be able to switch, but after this, the clock will still not be up. Yeah. Not a fan of this week's matters. That's fair, Shady. Sometimes it can be good to be like, you know what? I don't care for this week's meta. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just vibe. Then comes the charger bug, and this is double X's range. Oh no, X three D Gano. I feel like all oh, tries for it. Is that crunch? Hold on. That's a crunch charger bug, man. A surf doesn't knock out here, though. But yeah, the uh, name X3D Kano sounds familiar from, from my cues, so I've probably battled you at some point. If so, GG's. I've definitely battled a couple of people that hit the X3D prefix at its charge attack priority. Dang. Crunch is just unexpected because almost everyone runs Discharge x -Scissor. Yeah, it is, but he ends up winning without the, the, the Dragon Claw anyway. Oh, the lead scarm. Battle this past week of not these amount of past scenes. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Is that like a, a gaming clan or something? The X3D? Because I think I've battled, I think it was like X3D Jmar or something like that. And, and a couple other X3D people. Ooh, just gives up switch. Just going for charge and farm. But this charge is crunch. Old school PvP faction. Oh, got you. Oh, no. Jock throws on alignment. Gave a free volt switch there. That's tough. That's tough. Oh, and now he doesn't get the move because of it. Oh, no. Jmar's kept in wing attack. Oh, got you. Got you. But this is interesting tech from EJ because this gives charge a move that can actually hit Gligar. Like, it makes you worse into, like, you probably lose to Azu now. <laughs> but outside of that, you're better into Gligar. But people aren't really running Azu this tournament, so. Crunch gets the debuff. In comes Skarm versus Skarm. This is this is playable for Jox. He's down energy, but Jox definitely has play here. Jox definitely has play here. Like this will be a difficult end game, but if he can get it into potential range where a move from his Gligar can actually threaten the Skarmory, that'd be very good. You should still win against Skarm because there's no fast move pressure there. Also the sky attack. EJ calls it. It's a good call. There's another sky attack here. Jox calls it. Oh, that's step one. That's step one. That's a big call, man. That's a big call. That's a big call. He's over farming a lot. Goes for the Brave Bird on charge attack priority. Sky attack won't knock out a Brave Bird will. I do watch Daxi, yes. Daxi is a homie. I, I got to meet him in LA, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Daxi was actually in chat here a bit earlier, which is nice. In comes the glide. Oh, the catch of the aerial ace. But you should be able to undercharge this and get farm. Just hits a couple bubbles. Oh. Oh, he gets it. He leaves with the move. Oh, he didn't throw it. No! He didn't throw it! And that's the game!
If he aerial aces, he wins. Because the aerial ace allows him to farm down if it's... He tried to commit to the dig, but the aerial ace would have made up the health disparity between the skarmories. Oh, because like a dig knocks out there, but after the steel wings, it was aerial ace range. Oh, nah, that's unfortunate for Jocks. Yeah, he he mustn't have realized that, that he could get there, I guess. All right. Next matchup here. Giappi versus Hikami. Okay. Thank you, Mendini. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was just... People kept safe-switching Annihilate and Whiskash against me, and I really needed to have something to just smack both of those things. So I was like, I'm going to use Tropius, and it ended up working out. Ooh, he's baiting. Gets the shield. That's really helpful if you're the Annihilate player. Really, really helpful. Like, they still make double surf before you make your ball, because it's 12 to double surf, and a slash plus ball is 13. So you get outpaced, but hey. The overfarm by Joppy. This time he does get the shield call right on the Shadow Ball, which is big. Yeah, they really did annihilate justice, which is awesome. Oh no, Mini. Well, in jungle, uh, Vigoroth is good. <laughs> I hope that helps. Hope that helps. Yeah, there's dueling clods here. There's dueling clods here. Yeah, uh, Claude just stares smiling at the camera. Ooh, unfortunate CMP for Hikami there. Skarm into Skarm. Yeah, Claude, Claude, uh, just be watching, just staring, observing the world. Sends in the Claude. Yeah, people just wanted something that could check Lantern plus Vigoroth. Wall by Palisand, RIP BOZO! <laughs> Yo, I was running... Hold on. Can I show y'all the gauntlet of a set that I had yesterday? The gauntlet of a set I had yesterday. Claude versus Claude gets the catch. That's nice. He just lets himself get farmed down because he wants farm on the Skarm. Can he make the Stone Edge here? Oh, he just cannot. Well done by Joppy there. And he just makes the bird and it's GG's. Yep. Very nice. All right. This was the set that I had yesterday, chat. I don't know why it's doing this stupid... The stupid blurry thing again, that's really annoying. All right. So in one set, I battled against regional champion Lyle Jeffs, regional champion LNDST Steiner, and regional champion Abanov. Three regional champions in one set. I was losing my mind. Oh God, uh, I closed the wrong thing. And I was playing Palisade. We got two of three wins. We got two of three wins. But that set was insane. That set was insane. I lost to Lyle because Lyle is a fucking wizard, but I was able to beat Steiner despite him leading Altaria into my triple week to Altaria team. Yeah, uh, Palosand, because Palosand has way better flexibility now that it has Sand Attack. 
With sand attack, it's super fast. With, with sand attack, I was able to win a 2-1 to one shield endgame versus an Altaria. Ooh, tougher job. Be forced to stay into a Guz for Skarm lead. But yeah, Palo is actually Giga Chad. My IVs are so shit. I was running a 1478 Palo. Gets the debuff. As a Skarm, you have to bird here, which is awkward. And if Joppy shields the bird, then... Back to UL, that's fair. <laughs> but yeah, Palosand is actually a Giga Chad. I was running a team that was triple weak to ult, and I saw so many ults. But I beat a decent number of them. I beat a decent number of them because Claude Zire is a god in Jungle Cup. Claude Zire is irrationally good. There's no reason why Claude should be as good as it is in that meta. Uh, Keg W is a Twitch emote, and it is a very iconic, like, Spanish-speaking comedian's laugh. So it basically just means, like, you're laughing at it. you find it funny. Yeah, the uh, extra damage on it and ha having the one-turn flexibility is really nice. But yeah, sand attack's actually wicked. Yes, I like exactly. Let's just sky attack here. A lot of energy on this Skarm. Shielding the Claude is interesting. We're gonna put some pressure on Hakami. Gets the shield back. Claude gaming. All right, he got all shields down. Sends in Guz. I'm not sure I love the play to send in Guz instead of sending in the Skarmory. I think you could have just sent in the Skarmory and been fine. Yeah, for Jungle Cup Claude, it's definitely Mudshot, Stone Edge, and Earthquake. Yeah, because now he just loses to Charger Bug. Because he, he can get it low, but in the zeros, Brave Bird gets you really close here. But Brave Bird does not knock out. It, it, it does not knock out. Yep, doesn't do it. Yeah, it's close, but not enough. Oh, what a lead. Claude into the Lantern. Dominatingly positive matchup for the Claude. Joppy staying in here. This is looking really, really rough for Joppy right off the bat here. Maybe you can stay in and try and catch? Ooh, tries for the catch. Sends in the Annihilate into the Skarmory. And this sets up Skarm into Claude in the endgame. This is looking very favorable for Hikami. Very, very favorable for Hikami. This matchup is genuinely uncomfortable as both Pokemon. He counters it into Shadow Ball range. Shadow Ball plus one extra counter should knock out here. Gets the shield. The shielding a Night Sash always feels awful. And now a ball will knock out here. He's forced a double shield. But the more shields that are down, I mean, he can just claw them. But yeah, I found Claude to be like the, the glue that held that team together, basically. It was very, very strong. Yeah, my goal is for Jungle Cup content is, I mentioned it earlier, but just run teams that don't have any Vigoroth. Close to the Night Slash, because it's what he can get to. 
But I mean, Skarm into this, it's a very comfortable win for Nakami. Lantern, Claude. Hello, Earthquake. <laughs> right, Drizzle? Yeah. He's just living his best life. He's just living his best life. And he gets the mud shot down here. Oh, he just goes for the Stone Edge. He says, nah, fuck the mud shot down. <laughs> fuck the mud shot down. Skarm just completely in the driver's seat here. We're we're really, really good. Full health Skarm tanks two stone edges, and you can just steel wing it into bird range, so you're good. Yep. GG. <laughs> Skella Dirge. I uh, love me some Dirge gaming. And Hikami! Eliminates Joppy from the European International Championships. Next up, we have Onion Frank versus Palasha. Okay, I believe Palasha is the last remaining female battler in the tournament, and she has a Shadow Magnezone chat. Hold on. Show us those teams, bro. No, go back. Go back. Cresselia. Annihilate. Shadow Wizcash. Shadow Magnezone. Let's go. Skarmory and Altaria. Yo, what's up, Mark? And Onion Frank has Shadow Polyrath, Shadow Gligar, Altaria, Cresselia, Shadow Alolan Sandslash, and Lantern. We're now into losers round three. And game number one, leading that zone into Cresselia. The same switch into the Lantern, but due to the one-turn switch, she'll be able to outpace here. Shadow Magnazone. This is going to do so much damage. This is going to do so much damage. He lets it go deep into the red, and this just sets up Cresselia perfectly. Oh, my. There's a reason why in that in that action video, my first team had Shadow Zone. That thing is scary. That thing is, even in bad alignment, it's very, very scary. Gets the bolt, but it doesn't matter. Why is there a zone on your screen? Because it's here to absolutely destroy. It's here to destroy. Yeah, Shadow Zone is very fun. Yep. And yeah, this, I mean, what does he have in the back? Oh, it's Polyrath and Annihilate. This game's over. This game's over. This game's over. Going for an undercharge there because he wants Cresselia farm. Yep. Zone is a Chad. We love Shadow Magnet Zone. He's going to get a very nice Psycho Cut down here. She shouldn't make the grass knot. Oh, she does! Cress IV check. Holy. Also, Onion's Cress is the rank one. Fun fact. So, if you ever wanted to see what a rank one Cress can do, it's what Onion's Cress does. He has the rank one Cress. I'm not jealous at all. I promise. In comes the Wrath. Banks the mirror shot for later. And it's just Annihilate, and the game is done. That's seven. That's an icy win. She's shielding anyway, but... Yeah, rank one crest is insane. And she gets a straight Night Slash. Very comfortable win. And if she needs it, she has a mirror shot loaded, so... Size gets shielded, but Onion has has no way to play out of this. And 
she just counters down and takes it. And snipes with the Volt Switch. And she said, nah, I'm cooking. I'm cooking. Nah, that's crazy. Emoting on him. Emoting on him. Yikes. Yeah, he does have the rank, the rank one crest. Okay. We're in a replay. Oh, we go straight from replay to the game. All right. Shadow A slash into Shadow Magda zone. This lead matchup is not awful as the zone. Onion throws on alignment. Onion, what are you doing? Gives an entire volt switch to Magda zone. Sends in the wrath. She builds up to a mirror shot plus a wild charge. He calls the bait. Down goes Polyrath. And Onion is in shambles. Oh no. Onion is in shambles. He sends in the Gligar. That's getting wild charged too, chat. <laughs> Get ready to lose half your health on your Gligar, bro. She had a mirror shot plus a wild charge, so he thought that she was going to bait. And that's just an instantly won game for Palasha. Zero zone respect, throwing on alignment, and Palasha with a punish. Now, Cress into this, and then the ape into the A slash. And that's a 2-0 to zero win for Onion. Sorry, a 2-0 to zero win for Palasha over Onion. Oh, absolute slaughter. Absolute slaughter. <laughs> Onion's like, well. <laughs> oh. She's cooking, chat. Rank 1 Cresselia means she has the highest possible stat product of any Great League Cresselia. Status stand versus Arrow. I believe it's just Arrow and Dune left for, for the Americans. I believe it's just Arrow and Dune left for the Americans. Uh, Caleb, unfortunately, off stream was eliminated by Onion. Yeah, so they they didn't show it, but Caleb versus Onion was off stream, and then Onion won it. So unfortunately, there was more NA on NA violence. So Caleb eliminated Axon, and then Caleb was eliminated by Onion, who was eliminated by Palasha. Sends in Vigoroth. You would love to see Arrow bring in the Whimsicott here and try and throw it away, but he's staying in. I don't like this play at all from Arrow because if Stan forces alignment, which he can, he just loses. He just has to hope that this doesn't get shielded, but Stan shields it. Arrow's immediately lost the game because his Whimsicott is about to get, is about to get skarmed. And his Skarm will get Lanterned. Like, ah, man. Oldest trick in the book from Stan. RPS core, Lantern, Skarm, and then Vigoroth to force alignment versus Arrow's entire team. Arrow's trying to run Spice, but that often just leaves you weak to a lot of stuff. Lantern, Whimsy, there's Skarmory, GG's. It doesn't matter, you're up energy and up a shield. Whimsicott is not flexible. It's not flipping this. It's not flipping this. Yup, Whimsy just getting farmed for sport chat. It's rough out here. If you're a Whimsicott enjoyer, hide your eyes. <laughs> this is a rough one. This is a rough one. Yo, what's up, Kevin? Oh no, Skarm leaves with 100 energy. <laughs> Loses charge stack priority.
Even if he wins that church check priority, I mean, he can't, he can't win the game. It's just completely unwinnable. Um, not really, no. But that's why my catch stats are pretty shit. <laughs> For someone who has played as long as I have, my catch stats are pretty bad compared to a lot of people's. Oh! Lantern into Zard with Scarb in the back! The ABA! No! He ran the hardest possible ABA, gets punished for it, and he immediately, instantly loses the game on the spot. Oh, God. That is the hardest possible ABA you could run. Zard Skarm with a Guzzlord in the back. Jeez. Well, he's instantly eliminated. I wonder if there's going to be a pivot when the Guzzlord comes in. Yup. Well, uh... That's unfortunate for Arrow. That's very unfortunate for Arrow. I do like that a lot of these battlers are very expressive. But Arrow is Arrow's just very frustrated. Because he tried to make a read that he wouldn't lead Lantern, but he led Lantern, so he just auto-loses the game instantly. But that's the risk when you try and run ABA. And Stan is not shielding anything on this Vigoroth. He does not care about Vigoroth at all. Yeah, we're done here. Nice. Yeah, Guz is Guz is nice because it is soloable. It's a very easy raid, boss. He baits and he calls the bait too. Jeez. Yeah. Top left. And and he just knows it's over, so so he just he just claps and just lets him knock him out. All right, Arrow has been eliminated. There's only one American left, and his name is Dunebug, and he's in losers round six, so it'll take us a while to get to him. But, oh, wait, hold on. I think I saw we're going to get a little bracket. A little bracket review. Show us the bracket. Not that. The bracket. Show us the bracket. I saw it in there. Aha! So this is the winner's side. We had Weedle defeating Ventuski, Stan, and Lurgan, and Sendodu defeating Obadomac, Pablo Dinas, and Dune. Loser's bracket, here we go. This is how it played out today. We had, yep, Caleb defeating Axon, Onion defeating Caleb, Palasha defeating Onion. So we currently have Dune is over here and Lurgan's over here. So they are way far ahead in losers. We have Stone versus PvP David. Status Stan. So uh, Status Stan lost there. So Stan will play the winner of David versus Stone. Scoffo versus Palasha and Pablo versus Hikami. I don't because I started streaming when it was still going on. And we don't get a winner today. We just get a top three. So Weedle and... So we still have to play this game, 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 and this game. And then we're done for the day. And then we'll have one, we'll have our final top three. So we get, we go from 32 players to three. And once we have our three players, then a champion is crowned on Sunday. Oh, Scoffo versus Palasha, more Magnazone gaming. Okay. Not as good of a lead as you might hope, being the Whizcash player. Shadow Cash kind of sucks into, into Charger Bug. Yeah, I started streaming when it was still ongoing, so. Play. A little bit, yeah. Go for the Skull. His two Mud Bombs barely do not knock out. You need more Mud Shots than it takes to get to the two Mud Bombs for it to KO Shadow. There. So we will see the debuff. This debuff does mean that this Exorcist won't knock out. So she's going to let that through. 
Yeah, so we are doing spoiler free. But we have two of our top three already established. She got a double up here. She does. He can shield and that Volt Switch will KO, but he's just gonna let it go. I guess just snipe with ult. But Cress is really tough for Scafo in the back. Oh, doesn't get the snipe. Gets the Scald off. Gets the Scald off. What does she do? Does she mirror or does she go Cress? She mirrors and that's worse for Scafo. That's worse for Scafo. Yeah, that is pretty rough for Scafo, to be honest. She's just gonna let this go. Oh, uh, Scafo's game is lagging like crazy. Yeah, Scafo's game just froze there for a second. Scafo's game just froze there for a second. All right, bro, he doesn't get any energy. Oh, bro. All right, so Scafo's lagging a lot. Ah, man, I don't know if the game worked if he could still win this though. Because Cress up a shield is, yeah, Cress up a shield just completely crushes him here. So he's very clearly lagging, but I don't think they're gonna, they're gonna give a rematch here. Yeah, like he 100% he lost turns, but in the grand scheme of things with the turns, even if he got the correct amount of turns, he's not beating this Cress. He's not beating this Cress. Like, there is just no way. I don't know, Curtis. I don't know. Just for the future side, this does some big damage there. The lightning bolt to hit Palash's phone. Ooh, tries for the grass, not catch. Great patience by Palasha. It still says catch. No, that was not a catch. An attempted catch. Yeah. Crest takes it. I imagine they'll... We'll see if they go to a review. But... <laughs> Medieval Jouster. <laughs> Match under review, yeah. I don't think they'll grant it because I think Palasha just wins anyway. But the judges have been pretty consistently good about the calls this season. Like they've they've been really good. Oh, looks like no rematch was granted. Place tenth. It's top eight in this season, but people start to finish their matches. Yo, tenth is awesome for Yanshu. That's awesome, man. Congrats. Alt into alt. They both see a B tie on a sky attack, which is interesting. Neither one committing to a moon blast. But yeah, congrats, Priyanshu. Tenth, uh, tenth is awesome. Medieval Knight Wincon, not this game. Hey, keep it up, dude. That is, that that's very hype. That's very hype. Yeah, tries to snipe with Vigo. Met with Cress. I don't think Wigglytuff is winning this for Scafo. Like, lag happened, but yeah, there's a very important deciding factor of whether it impacted Scafo's ability to win the game, and it did not. She baits here, he lets it go. He should get the double up when she gets to her that's fair that's fair but i have to imagine scuffo kind of has to shield this because otherwise wigglytuff is gonna have to charming down a crest is basically a no and i think shielding this means that wiggles isn't winning the game Because that health range on Cress is really unfun. Ooh, snipes with the alt. Oh, she's going for Shadow Cash Farm. This is the. I like this play, bro. No Sky Attack catch, but 
She's just going for a shield and a billion energy. This energy is gonna serve her very well. Mud shotting down on Altaria. That's evil. That's evil. That's evil. I love it. I love it. Yeah, a uh, raid Guzzlords can be traded down. Gets the debuff too. Yeah. Mud bomb. I think it'll just knock out here. Mud bomb. Oh, it leaves it on one. Oh, and the free mud shot. I think that mud shot decides this. I think that mud shot decides this. Because she is on... She's on the four cycle. Yup. She's on the four cycle. Oh, that one HP survive. Getting the free mud shot without taking the charm damage. Beautiful. All right, Palasha takes it. Palasha advances. All right, PvP David. Another server member for Stone Collection. Yeah, the one time you want Bad Beast bags. Stone with a signature Shadow Sableye and PvP David rocking the Obama Snow. All right, Lantern into Vigoroth, okay. Decent lead for David. He has Obama Snow in the back, so he is pretty happy to catch Vigo on the lead here. He's just going to let this through. He knows he takes two body slams plus the counters. Goes for a bolt. A bolt landing means that worst case scenario, he can like spark down if need be, but... Oh, the switch out into the Gligar. That's a bold call. Hard reading that there's no Azu or Skarm, and there's not. I guess he's trying to bait out the Skarm with this team, but there's no Skarm. There's no Skarm. That's very fortunate that there's no Skarm. Cash is going to have an unfun time mud shotting this down. He gets double ace. Cash is gonna take a lot of damage. And then he has a bomb of snow to just neutralize his energy. All right, gets the shield. Ooh, that's very nice for David. That's very nice for David. Cause he has a bomb of snow just to shut down the energy. Um, I'm pretty sure that bug grass might be worse. Because if it's going to be a bad typing, or like bug ice, like we really try and... Ooh, does get the debuff that time. So his energy will be debuffed here. He leaves with a ton of it. Stone can switch though, and it preserves an ability to catch. All right, he's going to go for the Icy here, get the debuff. He wants to reset the damage, though, so he'll probably look to switch out. Yep. Valuable to get to this move as it puts pressure on stone. And this is now where two Icy wins can win the game for David. Stone can double up. David can't afford a shield. Because if he shields, then he just gets knocked out anyway, so there's no point in shielding. Instead, he needs to use this as an opportunity to get to two, and he will be able to get to two. And he does survive the Volt Switches because they're debuffed. Stone needs a catch to win this game now, and that will involve him waiting. That will involve him waiting.
Clock's up. Oh, tries for it, but the patience of David. And he's going for the Fat Matters Energy Ball. Let's go, dude. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, man. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, the Fat Matters Energy Ball is crazy. Yeah, and they hit him with a catch animation when he didn't catch it. That right there is why... No, it's not a new haircut. It's just my hair is down today. My hair really does what it wants to do. Vigo wins zeros here, which is uncomfortable. Yeah, a dig doesn't KO. Yeah, David is David is a very young battler. A stone, you kind of want to pivot here. Is it Sable. This will come down to what David chooses to bring in. Let's it go. The ace brings in the lantern, and that puts Charger on Skarm. That puts Charger on Skarm. Um, at this point, I'm pretty sure this is, this is probably around when I started the stream, so. I'd watched a couple of the, but the vast majority of the games happened when I was asleep. So I'm not 100% sure. Gets another one, which is nice. Yeah, this is this is tough. I am uh, central. In comes the Skarmory. I guess just hoping he goes for the wrong move, but he doesn't. He'll get one turn here, which is unfortunate for him. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that he gets one turn there. But it is... The damage hadn't registered, so... Checks out. Gets to go for the Aerial Ace. Um, if you click the switch button and it doesn't automatically register, then it's one turn. Yeah, this charge doesn't knock out here, but it does enough. Or you can just like volt switch. Discharge is pretty shit All right, Stone gets the equalizer. We're going to game three, folks. Oh, Shadow Save Lion and Shadow Gligar for the final game. Oh man. The Charge in the back looks good for Stone, but the Azu has nowhere to run. The Azu is completely countered in back. He's trying to get the double up. David is more than happy to just shield because the wing attack went through and he just denies the second move. He just didn't want to get stuck in a CMP tie, so he just farms him down. Brings it Azu. Pivot Lantern, and that should be game. That should be game. That's a nice pivot by David. It's a nice pivot by David. Like, Stone just has to hope that two shield Azu can cook. So maybe he's like, it's Skarm and I have a chance, but it's a bomb of snow, so he doesn't. Yo, it's a boss game. Like if it's Skarm, Azu might be able to cook. So he probably just saves shields for Azu and praise. 
Uh, it didn't register David's tap there, which is really odd. He did one of the move, it didn't register it, and forced him to do three of the move. Which is not what you'd hope to see. And he just goes Goliath here to deny that energy. Nice. The wing attack, I believe, should knock out here. Or actually, it, it leaves him on one. He gets the switch out. He gets the double up, which is nice. Work with normal Sableye. Ooh. I know the shadow's better in some situations. Ace puts it comfortably into a range where a weather... Sorry, the energy ball can knock out. He's down a shield and down energy, but this still should be winning for David. Uh, you know they're a team of six, so it's about making predictions as to what they have. Not baiting. Straight for the energy ball here. Stone's thinking about it. He calls the bait as his win con. But it's the energy ball connecting, and that's game over for Stone. Yeah. It's very tempting as, as the Icy Wind user to Icy Wind there, so he tries to call the bait as his win con, but unfortunately, David does not bait, and Stone says GG as he gets farmed down. All right, David advances. All right, Pablo Dinas versus Hikami. Hikami with the Claude. And Pablo, pretty standard team across the board. Oh, we got a game. Let's see it. Claude into Lantern. Not what Pablo was hoping to see. The pivot into the Lickitung. Ooh. By staying in, lets him get some... Get some damage here. He's gonna save the energy and switch. He didn't really chip the Lickitung, though. For Pablo, it's kind of all about just selling out for Swap at this point. He has to sell out for Swap to win the game. So he got a little bit of damage, but all he got was a couple mud shots. That's not gonna do much. Like slams, of course. I'm not gonna do a whole lot, but so my man team Claude. You have some good checks to backline, like good checks to Vigo on that team. It's a bit awkward. I guess your pivot would be Claude there. Surpri it's surprisingly not a terrible idea to pivot Claude in this meta. At least it wasn't for me last night. But not playing for Switch is the kiss of death here. I wouldn't say Sableye is bad at all. There's certain situations where being the regular or, or the shadow is better or worse, but Sableye isn't bad by any means. Oh, open gray league. Oh, in that case then, uh, if you run it in that order, then you don't have anything. You you don't have a safe switch. Gly, Azumarill. Like, Gly can play this out decently in the twos, but it's really uncomfortable. He's baiting. Calls the bait. That's nice. That's nice by Akami. That's very, very nice. He's just not hitting the bubbles because he knows he's shielding it. <laughs> he knows he's shielding it. The thing is, though, Claude took a lot of damage. Claude took a lot of damage already. Not out of the woods yet. What is happening? Bro, what is happening on Akami's screen? Alright, that's... Well, this is gonna be a rematch. Alright, uh, we're just gonna fast forward this to a rematch. Because it'll be a pretty clear rematch. Bro... The lag of this tournament has been rough. It's been rough. Okay, we do get a rematch. Licky into Claude. Timeout game. Let's go. 
Oh, Switch is the entire game. Cool. All right. Whoever wins the Battle of the Bulk, which I imagine is Claude. I believe there's like some some tech with like a really high rank. Oh, he gives up Switch. Why are you save switching a Scarberry? I get you're trying to bait it out to let Azu sweep, but why? Why are we save switching Skarmory? Why? Please, please stop save switching Skarmory. You have a Mandibuzz, man. Mandibuzz is way better if you're trying to bait out a Skarm, bro. It can at least do damage. You're getting farmed down for sport. He's leaving with a thousand moves to mess up your Claude and you've lost on the spot. Oh, that hurts me. That hurts me. All right, time to lose all of your Claude or all of your Azu. Why? Skarm is so good, but you can't save switch it, man. You can't save switch it, bro. Please. Please. Care for your Skarmory, man. All this, just to have Gligar put on it. All this, just to have Gligar put on it. He, yeah, he gets there. He has to throw. And he's just going to put Gligar on it. It is Skarm abuse. This is true. This is mistreatment of Skarmory. Well, at the very least, he will be able to learn from this teachable moment of never pivoting Skarmory again. It's like pivoting a Bastiodon. You clearly do not care about winning the game. The music's pretty loud? Oh, that's not good. Alright, I'll turn it down a little bit. At least he doesn't go over 100, that's good. But yeah, there's just not a way to win this. It's unfortunate because he was in a very winning position in the first game and then lagged out, but he really didn't set himself up for success at all, which is tough. Oh, man. I'm feeling it. This many hours of streaming multiple days in a row, I'm feeling it. I'm going to have to do a nice little stretch here. Uh, we should be ice beaming here. But Pablo doesn't care. Pablo's winning the game with Gligar. Uh, for a rematch, it's not same team, so you can run whatever you want. Uh, that team in particular, I think if you led into a Lantern, you'd have a very difficult time, because they you'd save switch Sableye, they'd stay into Surf, grab a shield, and then bring in whatever their check to Sable is. So, like, you could run it, but I think you would find yourself struggling against lead Lantern if you saw it. All right, game one to Pablo. Go through there. Yo, Boston! Hello, trainer. Saying hi with a Tim Bomb. Thank you so much, man. Welcome in. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Oh, man. These, these battles overall, like, this whole EUIC has been so much fun. Ooh, Altaria into charge. A good lead for Pablo. Yeah, Sable's, Sable's in an interesting spot where, like, it's still very good, but on the ladder, there's so many Wigglytuffs that, that, that end up being... AGAIN! 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 PLEASE! STOP IT! YOU HAD A MANDIBUS RIGHT THERE! The Mandibuzz, it, it, you, you actually can do damage to the thing. Oh, man. Like, the good news is he's going to learn from this and come back stronger. But in the interim, it hurts to see. Skarmory is not a pivot, bro. He leaves with a hundred energy on his fish. The only thing you try again if it doesn't work is ABA, not a Skarm pivot. <laughs> well, he'll be able to watch it back after the fact. 
he'll be able to watch it back after the fact and and learn from this. But in the moment, it hurts. Yeah, and Skarm was actually so wicked. Skarm was actually so wicked. Yeah. Like, Skarm into Alt plus Gly, you're cooking. But yeah, so a pivot is an alternate term for just a safe switch. Was that a Moonblast debuff? It was! How many times have we seen Moonblast debuffs today, man? It's like a 10% chance. That's the third one we've seen. Yeah, like, Hikami is, like, to, to get to this stage is a good player, but it just sucks to see, like, those, those mistakes happen. That Moonblast debuff is just... Oh, that's brutal. Like, I don't doubt that anyone who has gotten to day two is a very good player. It just sucks to... It's, it's very unfortunate to see those, those misplays. It's very unfortunate to see those misplays. But double pivoting Skarm hurts my soul. Yo, David versus Stan... Yeah, it is tough for Hikami, but the way I view it is they played two games after and he won two games. So even if he did win the first, he still kind of lost two to one. I know obviously the lag game will mess with your mental, but it's, it's an unfortunate spot. Like game state does not appear to have been amazing. Yeah, like the amount of battling they have to do, like Weedle was done like here. A Weedle was done like four hours ago, and these people still have to battle. A David with the triple flyer strat, Stan with the triple flyer strat, but they have different flyers. The choice of alt versus mandibuzz. They both have lantern, but David has annihilate, but a mama snow, and Stan has a bigger off and a Cresselia. Game one. Oh, lad turned into Skarmory. Devastating lead for Stan. The save switch into the Gligar. He can... Ooh. He's going to stay in here and go for a surf. He's on Icy Wind Abomas, though, which means he gets outpaced pretty significantly by Gligar, which, which makes this very awkward. The Gly pivot, since David didn't bring his Skarm, is very safe. Because he brings in Obama, but Obama is on Icy. It takes six to get to. So Stan just gets a double up, and he gets to force two shields right here. Stan can just instantly force two shields and put David kind of on the back foot in this game. Oh no, he throws one more! Oh no! He overforms and plays to a CMP tie that he does not win. An uncharacteristic mistake from Stan. Oh, that's really unfortunate. That's really, really unfortunate. Oh man. Altaria... In the one to zeros, it's just winning for Stan in the end game. But in the ones, it's not winning for him anymore. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, that definitely feels like we were talking earlier about the, like, how many battles you have to do across these two days. And that definitely feels like his just exhaustion hitting there. Lantern, alt, sends in the Annihilate. As long as he switched fast enough, he can make two balls. Ooh, it'll be close. He tried to go for the slash, but Stan gets the throw first. It'll be really close. I believe he should be able to make two balls here, though. So I think the only lose con is baiting at this point. Yeah, I think it should be a CMP tie to the next. And Stan calls it. Understanding the win con is David baiting. David doesn't bait. Oh, man. David gets the counter down, too. Oh, man. Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. And for Stan, had he just played it not to the CMP tie, he could have forced two shields there or swap, and that could have been a different game. But unfortunately, it's not. Yeah, 
right, David's David's pretty pretty wicked at this game. All right. David versus Stan. Are they locked in? They are Skarm into Cress. And he's AVA. Oh, he has Gligar in the back. Oh, no. Stan. Not like this. Not like this. Oh, no. Oh, that hurts. That hurts right there. That hurts. The hard read, no Skarm lead, and he leads Skarm. And David just reading this man like a book right now. Yeah, just completely read him. This is not... Oh, it might might live a sky attack here. I didn't see what movie clicked. He lets it go. Okay, he went for the brave word. ABA means your, your lead and your back bond share weakness. Like in this instance, both Gligar and Cresselia get completely destroyed by Skarmory. So he's running ABA weak to Skarmory. And the Skarmory was on the lead, so he basically just loses. Because he has nothing he can switch into. If he switches into his one counter, David just switches out and then he gets swept by Skarmory. And if he switches into Gligar, then, then the Gligar just gets crushed. But either way, if you get caught ABA, it's very difficult to claw back. And he calls the Aerial Ace bait too. That's so over. That's so over. I mean, at this point here, Annihilate just wins this game for him. So he, so David, a after calling that, just doesn't have to shield anymore. Stan baiting again. I think David's gonna call it again. Oh God, Stan is <laughs> head in hands for Stan. Oh no, absolutely brutal there. But he knew that he just didn't need it because he had Skarm for the Gligar. And then he had Annihilate to crush Stan Skarmory. Oh my goodness. Brutal for Stan, but David advances. Yo, what's up, Baj? Thank you. Yeah, we are watching through all of day two. We started at the start, which happened obviously well before, um, well before I was awake. And we're three hours and 40 minutes in. Honestly, I follow that strategy. If they call my bait, I just keep baiting. <laughs> I'm like, you will shield the bait. Legally, you have to shield the bait. All right, who do we have next here? We have Palacio versus Pablo Dinas. Climb back to expert. Yo, that's hype. Let's go. Jungle Cup team recommendations. Well, uh, Vigoroth is good. Triple answers to Vigoroth. That's unironically what I was running yesterday. It was just like, you don't get to play the game. You don't get to play the game. <laughs> uh, we saw Gudra in the most recent American tourney. In the most recent... Sorry, in the Vancouver. In, in the most recent NA tourney. Uh, yes, Pirate King Wings. Um, Palasha, who's right here, has, has won a regional before. Oh, it's Magnezone into the Lantern. Safe switch, Lincoln Tongue. Oh, you just go for the Wild Charge and dip into the Altaria every day of the week. Oh, look at this damage, bro. Look at this damage right here. Woo! 
That's some fucking damage, chat. Oh, uh, this is actually my same hair length as yesterday. It's just styled differently. Yeah, me shrank Gudra, but I don't think, unfortunately, it went very well for her. Yeah, Palasha is absolutely cooking. Palasha is absolutely cooking, bro. Palasha. The winner of this plays Lurgan. Holy shit. Okay. So the the winner of this matchup plays Lurgan and David plays Dune. Wow. This loser's bracket is incredible, bro. This loser's bracket is incredible. Claude plus Sableye. Uh, yeah, it's a bit soft to Altaria, but it's probably worth a shot. Yeah. Brings in the Cress. Just to get ahead on energy. The winner, yeah, the winner starts with the letters P A. Big spoilers. <laughs> the uh, winner of this matchup right here. Uh, it's Emmy Weedle in top three, and it's oh, what's the other guy's name? And Sandodu in top three. Yeah. Yeah. So Dune is still like Dune will play David next. Shadow Wilds are two to Azu, probably like 75, 80%. I thought Scarsatius was a Shmeedy Elo thing. <laughs> oh no, Ken. Hey, hang in there, homie. Hang in there. Uh, James, I'm right here. I'm not sure how I, w how I would be battling. Cooking again? Cooking again? Uh, we've had a lot of names today, Wolf. I I know Weedle, but yeah, the Sandodu name keeps escaping me. Cooking. Lock-ins. Oh, big into Magnazone. Pablo says, no, your Magnezone games are over. Tries to switch out there. Unfortunately, isn't quite able to without taking uh, two counters. Going for a rock slide and dip. The shield from Palasha. Pablo running very strong into the Magnezone. Team recommendations. I posted one yesterday that I liked. The Shadow Quag team. The team that I ran today or yesterday was Heracross, Claude Zire, and Palisand. Don't know if it's a good team. I went eight and five with it, but I can run garbage a lot of the time and still have results with it. But the entire goal of the team was I want three Vigoroth counters. But if you're wanting like a strong team, put Vigoroth with basically anything and you're going to be cooking. They kept saying Sandodu earlier. It's clearly Sandodu. Come on, man. <laughs> clearly Sandodu. Pablo giving up swap. He's... Oh, I have not seen a Callum upload because I have been live. Going for a rock slide here. If ooh, I guess assuming that Palasha will go for a move and he's just kind of throwing away the Vig. But I don't love that play to go for the rock slide. Vig lead, honestly, Vig can be anywhere and it's good in this cup. For full transparency, it's just so strong. Get up to the double wild charge. Gets to the double wild charge. That's very nice. DJ and brick break strats. Uh, 
I guess if you stream tonight, we will find out. <laughs> At minus four, does a double resisted aerial ace KO here? That's my question. Ah, oh, he's not going to try it. Bro, why are we zero bubbling? It's still going to KO. It's still going to KO, bro. It's minus four. Yeah, it's out of here. <laughs> uh... Can a future site knock out here? I Ooh, this will be close. Black RIB check, pause. If I have to make a prediction here, I think it's living this. I think it's living this. I think it's living this. It does? Does he get there? Oh! He settled for the aerial ace, but that's not gonna KO. That's not gonna KO. It's not going to KO. Palasha does it again. And she is going to advance to play Lurgan. Oh, wow. What a game. What a game, man. All right. Dunebug versus PVP David. We are officially in top six now. What started as 320 battlers, we are now in top six. We've seen the teams. The Obama Snow for PvP David with Icy Wind. For Dunebug, rocking a very standard team, but with the Shadow Whisk Cash. Yo, Mountain Dugong? Hello, welcome in, trainer. A trip to top four and loser's semifinals is on the line here. I thought they were starting the battles. I got baited. <laughs> Not even battling, and I'm shielding Bates. Rough. Oh, Annihilate versus Annihilate. All comes down to Bates. Do you full send the nuke? Do you call the bait? Or do you catch? Dune has a catch available here. Oh, PvP David winning charge attack priority. He is Dr. Kenbone. Yes. Dune can potentially play this out by Night Slashing and then just go for a Shadow Ball catch later onto his Lickitung. That would be a good play pattern from Dune is because david has since david um david has incentive to keep baiting here yep and then dune can basically force david to ball right away and then catch onto the lick tongue oh the boost from david the boost from david oh boy does he get his catch? Oh, he does! He does get the catch! Oh, there it is! This happened while I was live. I can't have seen that. That still does a lot of damage. The boosted Annihilate making quick work of the Lickitung, able to outpace here, going for the Night Slash. This is just gonna KO. And for Dune, he gets the catch. He saves the Shadow Ball. But this boost at Annihilate is still on a complete rampage at this moment. Dune can send in his own Annihilate and potentially try and knock it out. Or he can send in the Lantern. He sends in the Annihilate. Can go for the Night Slash to pick up the KO. But, oh, jeez. He lost one and a half Pokemon. David's Annihilate with the boost proving to be a problem for Dune here. In comes the Lantern. And this sets up Dune well. As now it's going to be Lantern into Skarmory in the endgame. Shadow Ball is going to connect. Dealing some sizable damage there. Going for the Surf. And you have to imagine David's not going to be happy when he sees what is in the back. The Surf picks up the KO. And there's the Lantern. You can see the Grimace there. That's not what he was hoping to see. Uh, exclamation point Discord should pull it up. He goes for the serve to deny the Thunderbolt. And that's a game one win for Dunebug. That's a game one win for Dunebug. Even with the boost, the beautiful catch by Dune. And he's able to take game one. Dune. One win away from top four at EUIC. David needing back-to-back -back wins.
if he wants to continue in this tournament. That's a tough go of it. The RNG goes your way, but the Lantern into Skarm is inevitable. Great catch there by Dune. Gligar into Gligar. This will come down to who wins charge attack priority. We see they're running the same team. They're running the same team. David wins charge attack priority. Oh boy. This could come down to who has the energy lead annihilate. Yo, thank you, Chris. Yeah, if he brought the Skarm in instead of the Lantern, then it would have been Lantern versus Lantern Endgame, which is a lot more neutral. Oh, Dune Shielding for Switch. Oh, this will be interesting. Dune Shielding for Switch means that I think the advantage of the game now tilts towards David. Because he can double up here. Oh, he farms down! Wow! In comes the Skarm. He gets denied. But David should be able to just annihilate his way to victory at this point. Oh, he sends in his own ape, and David just stays. David just stays. He has to force the shield here. A shadow ball would be enough to knock out. Dune is baiting. David has an incredibly tough call to make. He calls the bait! What a play! And that's instantly favorable for David. Now he can switch into his Annihilate. He has a 2-0 to zero shield advantage. What a play. Thorne says David running 6 hundos giga chat behavior. Imagine. <laughs> oh. Dude has back-to-back -back Night Slashes, but David, if he wants to, can Shadow Ball and deny the energy. Oh, wait. Did Dune win charge state priority there? Or did David pause? Oh, David paused. He uh, didn't click the move. So David waited a turn there. So that's why he, he didn't get a sneak. David waited a turn. That Night Slash landing. I mean, you're still not getting Steel Wing down. And I'm pretty sure the Gligar's one off. I don't think it has it. Health becomes an issue on the Annihilate, though. Oh, the patience there by David. This Shadow Ball should put Skarmory basically into the red health and does the switch into his own Skarmory. Can he get there? Can Dune get the catch? Oh, he goes for it. But the patience. David, 1 HP, and he's going to take it. What patience by David! Oh my goodness! He read Dune's play, doesn't throw the move when he gets it, and with one HP left, he takes the win! Wow! What a series there! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! This is crazy, bro. This is crazy. This is unreal. Unreal. <laughs> Wow, dude. Unreal. What good gameplay here. And we get to see a game three. Unfortunately, one of these battlers has to go home. Another is going to advance to top four. It all comes down to this. Weeks of preparation to get to this point. Winner of this next game, top four. The loser, unfortunately, their tournament run comes to an end. We have lock-ins for game number three, and it's Lantern into Scarberry. What a good lead. The save switch into the Shadow is cash. David doesn't have a good response. David has nothing he can switch into this Shadow is cash. He's just going to let the Lantern get hit with the Mud Bomb. That does so much damage, and now he sends in the Annihilate. But Annihilate... If it's down energy, struggles into the cash, so he had to kind of stay in there. And the hard read by Dune that there's no Obama Snow, and he was absolutely correct. Night Slash connects. Dune with the no shield, going for a mud bomb bait. David, choice to make here, calls the mud bomb. Dune will be able to make another mud bomb and force a shield. 
So despite the nightmare lead for Dune, the Shadow Whiz Cash pivot pays huge dividends as David did not bring the Obama snow. David gets the farm down. In comes the Skarmory. He's full sending the Shadow Ball here. The No Shield by Dune. He wants to guarantee some damage. In the back, it's Annihilate. He sends in his own Annihilate to get energy. He goes for the Night Slash, trying to burn the clock, and then he's going to be sending in the Gligar. Alignment is not there for Dude, but he has energy and he has shields, and that can flip hard counter games. In comes the Shadow Gligar. This could come down to a 50-50 call, and Dune is full sending it. David's gotten so many of these calls right. Can he do it one more time? He lets it go! The Shadow Ball connects, crashing into the Gligar, taking it deep into the red health. Gligar unable to make the back-to-back -back moves here as we're going to see a shield from the Annihilate. The counter goes through. Down goes Gligar. And David now suddenly in a difficult position. He has no health remaining on the Annihilate. He still has the Lantern, but there's Skarmory remaining. In comes the Lantern, and he's getting closer and closer to Brave Bird range. And this is very tough for David. He commits the shield, but Dunebug has energy on the Skarmory. Clock not yet up. Oh my. Oh my, this will be close. Can Dune get to a move? Or will David pick up the win? Clock available for David. He makes it to the surf. Does this KO? I believe the answer is no. Oh my, this could come down to a catch. David might need one more. The surf connects. The wait! He waits the turn! He, oh my! Oh my, what an unbelievable play by Dune. He waits the turn when the spark would have KO'd and he takes the win. Hard counter city, no shot. Dune bug, fireworks here at London as he's advancing in the top four. What an unbelievable series. Dune emerges victorious. Wow. Wow, what an unbelievable series there. Two incredible competitors. What a run by David, but Dune, wow. The patience there, the patience, unbelievable. Next up, the winner of this series, Lurgan vs. Palasha, is getting to play Dune for a trip to day three. That's just hard reading that David knew his win con and playing to you playing to the fact that David knows his win con. Magnazone looks incredibly strong into Lurgan's team. There's only one real check to the Magnazone and that is the Annihilate. Yeah, if David doesn't swap there, at worst, it's a tie. Yeah, uh, top three is tomorrow, MEJP. So we already have Emmy Weedle and Sendodu in top in the winner's side. And this is to determine who is on the loser's side. Palasha versus Lurgan. This will be a very tough matchup for Lurgan. He's so weak to that Shadow Magna zone. Palasha trying to find the Magnet Magic one more time. Shadow Gligar on the lead into Shadow Magna zone. This is a very safe wild charge and dip for the Shadow Magna Zone as you strictly outpace here. But Palasha not going for the wild charge and dip, instead staying in, getting the shield call right. Um, Dune lost to Sandodu, two to one. Palasha gonna double up on wild charges to catch onto the Lickitung. But this is still gonna do a massive amount of damage. And Palasha has Skarmory to help negate any energy on that Lickitung. So you can just build right back up, go into the Skarmory and Steel Wing down. And this game is tilting away from Lurgan at a dangerous pace. As Palasha farms down, Skarmory's energy is good into Lurgan's entire team. And this is, this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be tough, man. This is gonna be tough. He didn't bring the lantern. He has zero flying resist on the three Pokemon that he brought. He's in trouble here. 
he is in trouble here in a big way. In comes the Annihilate. But Annihilate's gonna have to give up shields. And there's a Cresselia waiting for it. And there's two wild charges loaded. So this game is already over. Yeah. This game is already over. There is not a way to win this game anymore. The catch onto the Gligar, but this will put it deep into the red. And then she can just mirror shot from here. Oh, she's cycle cutting down. Oh, that's such a good play. That's such a good play. But yeah, he, uh, uh Dune lost to Sandodu. But she just exits with energy here. And that energy plus a stored wild charge is just completely un unlosable for Palasha. Completely unlosable. Yep, and Lurgan just lets it go. That's a tough go of it for Lurgan, man. Shadow Magnezone is far too scary. It's far too scary. Yeah. That's part of why, like, I mentioned a couple times why I ran it in that series versus Axon. Because I just... It's very strong. Like, electric energy is good into most things in this meta. And that's also why I like Skarmory. Skarmory's energy is good into so much. Except Lantern, so don't save switch it. Lurgan needs the Equalizer to stay alive. Palasha, one more win. And we get a matchup between Palasha and Dune. But if Lurgan has something to say about it, we'll be going to a Game 3. Game 2, Annihilate into Skarmory. The definition of neutrality. Every charge attack thrown by the Skarmory commands a shield from the Annihilate. But Annihilate, if it can successfully land a Shadow Ball or have a Night Slash shielded, this matchup can drastically tilt in Annihilate's favor. Annihilate committing an early shield as the shiny Skarmory will go for the sky attack. When Skarmory gets below half HP, it is Shadow Ball range. Building up, going for the Night Slash bait. Decision time for Palasha. Palasha commits the shield on the Night Slash bait. And now there's a Shadow Ball headed her Skarmory's way. This Shadow Ball will pick up the knockout. Palasha has energy, but has the shield to get access to that energy. We're now going to see a switch out into the Dugong as the Skarmory fires off that charge attack. Energy on the Annihilate is very threatening into Palasha's team. The Brave Bird will connect. In comes Cresselia. Cresselia will make the Grass Knot when the Icy Wind is reached. Lurgan just wanting to apply Debuff. Forced to throw on alignment as Palasha will take the free Psycho Cut. In exchange for an ability to over farm. Icy Wind not going to be doing a whole lot of damage. Palasha can go for four Psycho Cuts here and will. Farming up just shy of the back-to-back -back Grass Knot to make sure to not go over 100 energy. This is a minus one Grass Knot into the Dugong. The Grass Knot is going to connect and this sets up a Psycho Cut farm down. Oh, but not before one more Icy Wind is reached. This Cresselia exiting with energy. She was double shielding the Skarm to pretend to have Zone in the back. Huh. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily see, see that play personally. The future site, I mean, it's minus two. It, it, it's not really realistically going to be doing anything. Going for a grass knot now. Lurgan knows, not the future site. Can over farm to the point where it's in ace range? Yes, nice. But Annihilate energy is just very, very good here. Ooh. Forcing the energy here is rough. Forcing the energy here is rough, man. Because it's just Altaria O'Clock. It's Altaria O'Clock. Oh, man. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Palasha takes it. Palasha takes it. For some reason, my tired brain thought he had a Shadow Ball loaded, but he threw that Shadow Ball. He threw that Shadow Ball. 
All right, Palasha versus Dune for a trip to day three as our final match of the day. Yeah, for some reason in my head, I thought there was a Shadow Ball loaded, but there wasn't. <laughs> there was not a Shadow Ball loaded. Final match of the day. Winner advances to loser's finals and will play tomorrow. Let's go, X3D Kano. Good stuff, dude. Good stuff. That's pretty close to number one in the world, man. Congratulations. It's gotta be up there. Ooh, Altaria into Licky, okay. This is a zero shield win for the Altaria, typically. Got number one today. Nice. Congratulations. Go for the sky attack here. Oh, he, he's already number one. Yo, that's funny. <laughs> As you can tell, I have been live, so I have not seen the boards update. Yep, ult makes the sky attack, wins zeros. Dune gonna let it go. Here's the thing though. There's nowhere for that Gligar to run, but the Annihilate is going to be scary. The Annihilate is gonna be scary. Sends in the Skarm. That is what Dune needed to happen. He needed to have the Skarm brought in here, because at the very least, his energy can do something. Go for the Shadow Ball. The shield, Palasha gets the shield call right. Go for the sky attack. It's probably still a one game for Palasha, but like if, if Palasha double shields here, this gets uncomfortable. Cause this, this knocks out. Yeah, this is, this is looking, I don't really see a path forward. Oh, hold on. Let him get a night slash. Nah, I don't think it, I mean, it doesn't KO, so. This brave birds here. The brave bird connects. Wait. No debuff, and this is a win. Holy win, charge attack priority. Hold on. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. He has one of them CMP winning Gligars. Hold on. Hold on. Hold. Debuff. No debuff. And that's not 12.5%. That Gligar's living it. That Gligar's living it. No, sir. That Gligar is living it. And he gets the double up. And dude, that looked doomed. But he takes it. He takes it. Wow. What a game by dude. Letting it go, reading that it was the shadow in the back, the shadow uh, Whiskash in the back. That's such a great read, man. That's insane. Reading that a brave bird would do less than a shadow skull because it's only neutral. That's such an insane read by Dune. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Dune, one win away from being our third competitor in top three. Palasha needs back-to-back -back wins to pull this off. Do we have lock-ins? We do! It's Skarmory into the Cresselia. Palasha running triple weak. Save switches a Skarmory, but not punished. Dune did not bring his lantern. She's basically running triple weak to a Skarm lead. Save switch a Skarm out of desperation, but... Dune didn't bring the lantern. The save switch goes unpunished. 
Dune kind of forced to stay in here. Uh, they have a winner's finals, Kai, which Sandodu and Weedle play. Then the loser of that plays Dune in loser's finals, and then the winner of that plays in grand finals. They're both trying to steal wing into bird range. Palasha running the triple flyer team. All right, the brave bird into the Skarmory picks up the KO. And he's just looking to pivot Gligar. Once that Skarm is gone, Gligar's energy is so useful. Glig can win ones here versus the Altaria. Palasha with the no shield. Aerial Ace connects. This Aerial Ace does not knock out, but it does set up a potential wing attack farm down, so we do see the shield from Palasha. Trying to double up, not quite able to get there. Dune committing the shield, wanting to continue to apply pressure here onto Palasha. Dune gonna make the aerial ace. Ooh, over farms by one. Palasha commits the shield. Dune will get farmed here. Oh, doesn't get the aerial ace. But he can just bring in the Skarmory. Throws the sky attack. Sky attack won't knock out here. Let's it go. Oh, gets a sky attack himself. She was worried about a moon blast getting shielded, but I mean, she has a Cresselia and it's Annihilate in the back, but Annihilate has a shield. And he goes for the Night Slash to deny the full sneak. And that means that it's game over because she is now unable to make it to a bait plus a nuke because he uh, denies the, the, the full sneak there. Yeah. Shielding a Grass Knight here doesn't matter because Dune can outpace and Dune knows it. Like you can see him, him celebrating here. He knows that by denying the sneak, he auto wins this game because it's charge attack priority. But that is how on top of it these battlers are. The moment that sneak was denied by him throwing because he got zero turn and she got one turn, they both instantly knew it was over. So Dune Bug is our final competitor in top three. He is America's remaining hope. And he's mobbed by some friends there, which is awesome to see. <laughs> they are carrying Dune on their shoulders. Oh, that, that is amazing. They are carrying Dune on, on their shoulders there. Oh, Dune is the top three in the loser side. So, on winner's side, M.E. Weedle versus Sandodu. The loser of that will play against Dunebug. And then the winner of that game gets to play in Grand Finals. But yeah, brilliant day of battles. Unbelievable. And tomorrow we get to see which one of these three trainers will become the European International Champion. Will Dunebug steal the title away from Europe in their own in their own continent will M.E. Weedle, who's been a regional champion, a world champion, get the title of international champion? Or will Sandodu shock the world and be a first time winner? It's going to be interesting, chat. We're going to have to check it out. But I appreciate y'all for hanging out today. I had a lot of fun. Hope y'all did as well. And I will see y'all later. All right. Peace.